Nice. Think Charlie, kick us off. off. Yeah. Hello, you, we, we, and we welcome get... back to the official podcast. This is episode 168, or uh, more, <laughs> somewhere in that ballpark. Today, we have a special guest. I don't know how, how many remember, but I made a video a while back about a man, a young man, who went to jail for six years over a RuneScape edgy joke. And that man has joined us here today to tell us his sad tale. Please welcome <laughs> Josh Palalt. How's it going, guys? Happy to be here. I bet you're just yeah, happy, happy to get the fuck too. out of prison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah he Fresh came out of prison, straight here. Straight onto the official podcast. I'm really not totally positive, which was harder. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> probably, we'll send you right catch back. Less flack here. <laughs> yeah. You chose the hot box to go right back. It's a speed run strat. Well, hey, you know so what? when did if you? If anybody on earth knows the law about the uh, freedom of speech, it's me. I know what I can and can't say. So let's boogie down. When did you get out now? Uh, this time I got out uh, technically July 11th, but I was in a halfway house for the last six months until like a month ago, and I just came home. Like I'm living this with time. my wife and my in-laws now. Yeah, okay, I, let's... I actually went back for another year on violation. I was in touch with Kaya last year after uh, my first <laughs> after my first interview and stuff like that. And, uh, I was on probation for about 44 days. I thought it'd be a real good idea to smoke a bunch of pot, failed a drug test, went right back, got another year, followed by uh, mandatory six months halfway house. So I just went and did another little year and a half. No big. <laughs> okay, so you should really blame yeah, Kaya for the record. You should just say Kaya bullied you into smoking weed. Well, you know, man, yeah, I, was I so didn't do shit. About the, the back and forth and missing his messages and can we figure this out and can I go on a show that, man, I had no choice but to relapse. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, my blood is on his hands. What can I say? Love you, Kaya. <laughs> so for everyone who hasn't heard your story, you should tell from the start. All yeah. right. Well, uh, basically, I was... Um, yes, yeah, once again, I too hate the slang, but what they say now is I was a real edgy kid. And uh, I was drinking and How playing old were RuneScape you? in 2012. I was 19 at the time, so I was actually mm -hmm. illegally drinking. <laughs> but uh, I was playing Charlie's favorite game, RuneScape. And um, mm. I, basically, I was standing at the marketplace of the game, the Grand Exchange. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me to download a video game that made fun of a school shooting, the Columbine shooting in 1999. It was like made light of that. <laughs> and... Uh, I was kind of arguing with him about it and telling him that I didn't think that was cool or whatever. And uh, another player came up and started talking shit, told me, hey, man, don't talk about Columbine, you dumbass, blah, 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 which is pretty much what I was saying to begin with. So my drunk ass thought it'd be a good idea to tell him that I loved Columbine. That's why I was even talking about Columbine. <laughs> and uh, watch out on April 20th, 13, you're going to see my name on the news, which transpired to be a Saturday. Not that the FBI gave a shit. So I got, ba I got not banned, I got permanently muted from RuneScape the next morning. And uh, I thought that was the end of my punishment, that I'd worked so hard on my account and got muted. So I started playing World of Warcraft for a few days. My girlfriend bought me the World of Warcraft box set. It was all good. And then four days later, the SWAT team and the bomb squad showed up at my house. And, uh, Jesus Christ. Dragged me out there in the yard. And I ended up uh, basically becoming a scapegoat for the phenomenon that rose more and more by the day of mass violence. And I got sentenced to six years in prison, federal prison. Uh, by the time that I was 21, I'd been in jail for a year and a half before I finally got my sentence and they, uh, sent me to federal prison. So I served five years on that before I went to uh, a halfway house, got out, smoked some pot, went back for another year and a half. What was the actual phrase that got you in trouble? What was their main thing? Uh, the main they thing that I said anything? was, um, there were like a few, damn man, I actually have the official Jagex like company report somewhere sitting to my left. <laughs> Um, but basically the three you things that I said were so high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put that with a magnet. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I said, I can't wait to blow brains out of skulls or something. Uh, I mean, bro, I was selling it. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was fucking selling it. I went full send on it. And, um, and I said, I look for my last name on the news. All I got to do is get some gun clips and cocktails. I'm ready to go. Man, I was going hard on this kid. He was going hard on me. He was telling me, kill myself, call, kill yourself. He said, told me to call him on the phone and blow my brains out. All this good shit. I mean, this wait, was a wait, full wait, wait. So you, you gave him like your You gave him like your last name and your phone number in the game? No, I didn't give him a phone number. The, 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 the date that I said, the, the numbers were just the date that I was claiming oh, that this was going to okay. happen. I mean, I went pretty hard with it, man. Um and I said, if I have anything to say about it, that shit can be gravel or something like that. Or that school can be gravel for all I care. And that word gravel actually got me an extra charge, transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives because I specifically <laughs> said the word gravel. 
<laughs> um, so um, that was rookie my, mistake. Yeah, Ash. yeah, definitely. Ash is the safe one. I'll yeah. burn it to ash. No one cares about ash. Well, technically, I mean, it's destroy buildings by fire and explosives. They just still clap me anyways. But um, True. that and the other one was uh, transmitting threats to kill and injure the person of another. And um, yeah, it, it the, the transcript that they had was great because it was only like the 30 <laughs> to 45 seconds of the report that the guy sent to Jagex. It wasn't the full argument. We didn't get that until months later. And so the way that it starts after he reported me was I said, I intend to kill myself because the dude had been telling me, <laughs> the dude was telling me to kill myself. So when we get the, like the transcript, that was the subject of the indictment. The very first line is me apparently fucking randomly saying, I intend to kill myself. <laughs> when, when Just really, going to the GE. My, my rune armor trimming didn't work. Fuck. Yeah, it's exactly. Over. Somebody scammed me. I intend to, well, fucking... Long story short, the feds were not too thrilled about this. They got a grand jury indictment on me. Uh, they came and busted up in my mom's house like a week after I moved back in with her because shit wasn't going too hot for me and my girlfriend at the time. And um, yeah, everything everything went pretty south from there pretty quickly. I had no clue why they were there, man. I mean, I'm talking about they were like 50 field agents, man. They were all over my house. They were on top of it. They were climbing up the sides of it. Guns out, just ready to go, just trying to smoke somebody. Did that guy get I in trouble at all? I was 15 years old. Do did I? that guy who was telling you to kill yourself, did he catch any nah. shrapnel? Nothing. No, nah, of course not. He's probably like regarded as a hero by them. But, um, did he not even get interviewed or anything? Um, no, uh, I, I think that they like attempted or considered subpoenaing him or something like that uh, to get his take on it. But to be quite frank with you, I'm pretty sure the dude was like 14. I mean, this was RuneScape, and he was trying to get me kicked <laughs> off the game. And I don't think he wanted it. It worked. I don't think he wanted to be that deep in it. Oh, yeah, it worked. He got me kicked off of society. I got banned from society for a little while there. But um, he, uh, they also tried to subpoena somebody from Jagex who pretty much told him, go fuck yourself. Um, like the, the little quote-unquote experts they were trying to bring in about it were just like not basically non-existent, just total red herrings. And, um, well, what kind of expert could you possibly bring in? Who could you possibly bring in besides a bunch of psychiatrists and maybe some politician trying to make his name for himself, proving that video games do cause violence? We actually had a psychiatrist testimony. Oh, we do two mental, different mental valuations, both of whom found that I was not a danger to myself or others. Uh, they subpoenaed the doctor from the long federal mental evaluation. I had to go to a federal prison for 90 days for a mental evaluation. They subpoenaed her to testify, and she gave an awesome testimony about me. And the better that she talked about me, uh, the madder that the judge and the prosecutors got. <laughs> she said that I was charming and that I seemed like a pretty intelligent guy. And I had a streak that was a dark sense of humor, but uh, I was helpful to the other inmates because this man, I was on a federal prison crazy ward, bro. It was fucking wild. Did you get evaluated by Harley Quinn? <laughs> How did he get so lucky? Was, he's so dreamy. Oh my God. Yeah, when she we, said charming, I figured that that was kind of the nail in the coffin because the judge looked pissed. He was like, oh, <laughs> this damn kid right here has got more game than me, damn it. I've been trying to hit that psychiatrist for years. Yeah, I, I, he was. Uh, he looked really pissed when she said that. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, what, what, why? Why possibly would he be pissed that she gave a glowing review of you? I, I don't know, man. He was seeing the way that he. It, it was just the way that he chose to perceive me. I guess you know. Uh, people kept saying that I was intelligent, which was kind of aggravating. But every time that they said that, he would get redder in the face. Man, this dude hated my guts. He still hates my guts. I was, <laughs> I was recently told I've got a lot of friends that still live in that town, and one of them happens to kind of be generally acquainted with this judge. And they were like, man, this dude has got a boner for you, man. He is not he, – he just can't wait for you to mess up again. To put it in perspective, when I went back for my violation, obviously I went before the same judge for smoking pot, right? He sends me to a year in prison followed by mandatory six months halfway house. A good friend of mine got caught with needles – Failed three drug tests in a row for methamphetamine, went on the run from his PO and stopped calling, and then got on a police chase. That same judge gave him six months and told him he needs to get his life wow. together. Sorry for the harsh sentence. Gave him six months in prison with uh, no halfway house. I got triple Did you fuck that. his wife or something? Man, not that I know of. <laughs> That was him on the RuneScape, the other end. You just <laughs> beat him at his own game. Yeah, he was the he was the fourteen year old that was trolling me. He was just he was just pretending to be a fourteen year old. He set it all in motion. He's like the fucking Mysterio of your universe. Yeah, he was puppet and master behind this one, man. He he definitely uh he set me up. I walked into the trap and he sniped me. 
Yeah, he, uh, he didn't care for him, man. The, I don't know if you guys have ever seen much or heard much about prosecutors, but, man, those guys speak like emo teenage girl diaries. Like, everything is so drastic, so dire, and so dramatic, and, like, oh, my mm-hmm. God. He threatened to reenact Columbine at one of our local high schools, and act so horrific that it's hard for civilized people to even imagine that. And I mean, like, that's word for word right there. Cause I had the transcript for a while and I used to read it in prison when I first got like, got there and it was still eating me up. Like these dudes were just in there just going ballistic, man. And they, they were, they were, uh, man, I'm not going to lie. Cause people are going to go Google it and stuff like that. I can't talk too much in depth about why, but I know why now two of my ex-girlfriends actually got on the stand and lied about me. And I can tell you that they were coerced into doing it by the FBI. And I cannot say why at this point in time, but oh, this was like this well, whole intrigue. Thing. Yeah, Dude, this, I remember reading about is that. There a, is there a legal counter argument you can do on that where you can say, hey, these two lied and I want to like sue them now or something? Uh, we we contradicted one of them on the stand. We actually proved one of my girlfriends was lying on two different points while she was still on the stand. At the end of it, my <laughs> lawyer raised a contradiction about it. He was like, look, how are you going to not throw her testimony out? I mean, she, we caught her lying about two very major issues here, not to mention their testimony conflicted with each other, which is funny because one one of them, I would also say this, and I can say this, when I got out of prison, they both talked talk to me when I got out the first time. They both contacted me. They explained to me what happened. They told me why they did it, and I wasn't even mad at them. You know what I mean? But um, I don't understand how there was conflicting testimony whenever one of them was actually like instructed on what to say, basically. She told me point blank that the fucking prosecutor gave her a PowerPoint presentation about my case. <laughs> Like, remember this, basically. The prosecutor you know? gave them both Holy different shit. cases to see who would do better. Oh, yeah, apparently so. Was he was doing auditions for it or something. But um, <laughs> I can't go into too much Christ. detail about the girlfriend thing, man. But we, we contradicted one of them twice within, like, 30 seconds. And at the end of it, my lawyer was like, well, we believe this compromises her credibility as a witness. And the judge says, I'll see. I'll see. Well, I'm the one who's judging the credibility, and I find that she was credible. So we're, you lose on that point. I'm going good. I mean, he just wasn't going to. He wasn't going to back down off of it. He wasn't going to take anything. She said she could have been up there like I fucked the unicorn yesterday and he was going to take the take the whole <laughs> just take the testimony as it was. Maybe God. maybe he was coerced by the FBI too. Oh man. To be Ooh. fair, during this time, this was 2012, right? By during time, that by the time of my trial it was 2014 and it had gotten wild. Yeah, because during that same time period, this exact thing happened to a British teenager over League of Legends forum posts. Oh, wow. He got arrested. Yeah, he got arrested for similar things. I don't think his was school shootings. Mm. I think he was just threatening to, like, stab people or something. But I remember yeah. there was, like, a little streak of video gamer threats that eventually led to prosecutions, and yours was the most extreme. But I think oh, it was yeah. just this this witch hunt for a little while yeah. and then people started to realize how ridiculous it is to start locking kids up for video game edginess right justin carter from texas got arrested uh four months after me and he had said something on league of legends about eating a kindergartner's heart or something like that or blowing up a kindergarten to eat their still beating hearts and then just like me which this was in the long transcript he said he was being sarcastic which i did too i would like to point that out to everybody i actually said and i had it in the long version of the transcript where they took everything that i'd said on runescape for three days which was horrible and and i said clearly that i was just kidding but um when justin carter got arrested Everybody was uh, like even Philip DeFranco did a video where he mentioned my case because he was talking about that one. And he said, is, is Justin in danger of anything bad happening to him? Well, as a matter of fact, Josh Palau from Oxford, Mississippi, is still in jail. He's been in there for like eight months at this point. Uh, and they're not letting him out anytime soon, it seems like. And the more media, like the more publicity that we got behind it, it really started kind of like getting on news stations that these teenagers got locked up for talking shit. The more publicity that we got, the more the government dug in their heels and decided that they looked like assholes and they had to prove that I was really going to do it just to save face for themselves. Totally yeah, insane. It sounds man. like they man, wanted I'm to make an example fucking- out of you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I'm fucking frustrated for you. Is there anything you can do now at this point and be like, hey, that judge was an asshole and he was out to get me and this, that, like... Well, it's not a special case, though. His is just really unlucky that he was an individual. Like, do you guys remember when The Conjuring was getting sued for, like, $900 million? The only way they could ever, like, get out of that was to prove that ghosts were real and like demons existed they go to this extra mile to like protect themselves and never admit fault 
Never. I mean, that's kind of funny. Never admit no wrong <laughs> and like, bro, I, I've it been saying this for the longest, and nobody listens to me, man. I'm not mad that they came and tore up my shit and checked this out. Maybe even, you know, some counseling, some probation. I can understand that, man. I'm down with that. But the fuckers sent me to prison for five years, man, when I was 19, you know? Like, that, it was yeah. overkill, dude. I'm not Absolutely. saying I should have been punished. I'm not saying that what I did was okay. But the punishment just didn't fit the crime, man. This is a, a, a two-minute prank. And it cost me this much of my life, man. I'm, I'm 27 now, and I'm st- I'm I'm on pr- probation right now for the next year and a half. I've been dealing with it. By the time I get off paper, it's been almost 10 years. I look, man, you got fucked out of a lot of years of your life. The truth is, a lot of those kids who do plan, who really are planning on killing people, they do brag about it on social media beforehand. Happens every single time, right? One of them shoots up a school, and then the FBI comes out bumbling and fumbling, saying, oh, yeah, turns out he was bragging and, you know, warning us for like two months, but we ignored this. But then go through their house, go through the person's house, and if there's literally no evidence, and if a psychiatrist says actually he seems kind of okay and fine, at that point, you shouldn't be still giving him a six-year sentence for nothing, for so nothing fucked. that hasn't even happened yet. I, when I first heard it, well, not when I first heard about this, but as you were telling the story, I remember the most, I don't know if it was the most recent school shooting, but that, that 19-year-old kid who shot up a high school, I think it was. In Florida. Nelson, I think so. I don't really remember the details. I think the kid's name was like Nelson something. Nicholas. And then the... Shit, I, I, I haven't brushed up on my school shooter lore. Just the, <laughs> oh, one damn, of the man. bigger ones. He... When that when it happened and he like tried to get away, the FBI came out and said, "Yeah, we've been watching him for a long time. We expected this. We knew it was coming." So the question is, why the fuck didn't they do anything on it? But for you, they acted within a week over yeah, Runescape. Yeah. That exactly. guy was bragging in live stream chats about he was going to shoot up his school. Yeah, I think you're talking about. You're Nicholas talking about Cruz the from, uh, Parkland. Oh, uh, yeah, the yeah, Parkland shooting. The fucking sheriff got fired afterwards. He. See, this is the weird thing about these uh, law enforcement people. The sheriff mishandled that in just absurd ways to the point where his men just sat outside the school and basically listened as people were getting gunned down and they just didn't do anything. And then the guy goes on national TV and started pointing the finger at everyone else and said that you have blood on your fingers and you and you, but not me, not my department. Finally, I think last year he got his comeuppance and he got fired, but still... The FBI exactly, you know, comes out saying, well, you know, OK, maybe, maybe. Uh, no, actually, I think the best part was this. I don't know if you guys caught this on social media. Somebody said that their department was warned 20 something times. And then the FBI or the local police department corrected the record on their own Twitter saying, no, it wasn't actually 20 times. It was 27 times. OK, guys, please do not spread lies about the fucking incompetence of our department. These fucking morons. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they acted so quick on you, man. That 14 year old kid on the other end must have had some of the strongest fucking connections to the government to get I'm your I'm telling ass. you, man. <laughs> well, really, what, what really happened apparently was that uh, he reported me to Jagex, and Jagex just passed it on to the FBI. Because they, they, they have stuff like this happen apparently relatively often, not that you can tell the prosecutors that. And uh, their, their standard, you know, get it off of my desk is to forward it to the FBI, and they can do with it as they will. And, um,. I'm not sure exactly what the deal with the kid was. I'm not positive he was like 14. As a matter of fact, here's a fucked up coincidence. Like a month ago, this random dude uh, sent me a message request on Instagram. And his Instagram name was the username of the guy that I got in the argument with. And so immediately, Are you sure it wasn't him. Yeah, I mean, I asked him. I, I asked him his first name. I said I said the first name of the guy with a question mark, and he was like, "Do what?" And I was like, "Uh, nothing." He was like, "Hey man, I saw your YouTube videos and uh." You got a crazy story, and I was like, "All right, we're not, we don't have to gloss over the fact that I called you by that name. You got a really coincidental name here, dude." <laughs> but, yeah, he's playing you again. He's trying to get you yeah. back on the, back on the saddle. You around too. <laughs> Jabay, so how do you feel about Parkland? Yeah. What do you think about weaponry? Hey, man, you ever heard of Eric and Dylan, bro? <laughs> how you feel about <laughs> them guys, man? You got any trench coats over there, man? <laughs> I was in the Any one diaries? house in Mississippi that didn't have a damn gun in it. Like the only house in the entire South that didn't have a gun, and that's where they arrested me. I didn't have a pocket knife in there. BB gun, nothing. No CO2 cartridges, not a gallon of gasoline. I mean, like straight up nothing. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I didn't have a, a couple of bad charges worth of drugs, but I didn't have anything, you know, dangerous, dangerous. to other people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
I didn't have anything dangerous in a mass way, you know, and, and uh, man, they gave me middle evaluations. They, they sent it to me to a state middle evaluation first, where I had to take this like 2000 question test where the first question was like, sometimes demons tell me what to do. Very true, oh, true, God. false, very false, no answer. And I was like, oh, this should be easy. Um, it was like a three hour <laughs> interview with the guy. And he wrote this cool paper, you know, he was like, nah, the, he's not a danger to himself or others. Uh, he's got a drug problem and he's a smart ass, but that's pretty much the gist of it. And, uh, as soon as we got that back, they immediately filed for me to have a full scale federal middle evaluation. I guarantee you if that dude would have said, oh yeah, he's a maniac. Definitely. That would have been fine. They would have left it alone at that. Yeah. I don't think they like smart asses. Nah, man. Authority really. Yeah. They, they really fucking hate smart asses. They're going to get you on something. I mean, I went, I went, by the time I went to sentencing, I'd been locked up for a year and a half. My recommended sentence was 18 to 24 months. And that's with a six point sentencing enhancement for intent to carry out the threat. I assumed that I was going to get the six point enhancement for evident, uh, actions, evidencing intent to carry out the threat. We just assumed it. That would put my guideline range at 18 to 24 months, right? I'm not going to lie to you. If 17 months at that point of stewing in jail before I went to sentencing, uh, I pretty much was like, I'm going to go in here and act however the hell I want because he's not going to be able to give me more than seven months. And at this point, my pride, it's worth it to me to go in here and act like an asshat and get only seven more months. And uh, so I went in there and basically I saw a comment on a video, another interview that I did recently where somebody said, you basically got all that time because he went in there and said, OK, boomer. And I pretty much walked in there and said, OK, boomer. And he tripled my max sentence and gave me six years. <laughs> And, uh, was it, wait, OK Boomer was a thing back then? No, no, he's, no, 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 no. Retrospectively, yeah, he basically, uh, basically uh, pioneered it. it. The judge right. got up there at one point and was like, because they were trying to make a big deal out of me, quote unquote, downloading that video game I was talking about that was making fun of Columbine, right? And uh, we argued it like in a legal motion. Like I was like, I didn't download it. You can look. And the, obviously the FBI analyzed all my computers and um, and phones. Everything that stored information in the house was was totally yanked up by the FBI. And uh, the guy was like, no, we don't see any evidence that he actually did download the game. I can see where he searched a page for it and apparently read up on it and did not download it. The judge is like, I'd like to interject here. I'd like to say that I don't know what the term download or attempt to download means. So you can have that point. We're just going to call that a moot point. You can have it. I don't even care. Whatever downloading is, it doesn't matter. Okay, oh he didn't download God. it. Next next issue. And I'm like, oh, good. Was it, <laughs> wasn't anarchist cookbook wasn't that kind of a big one as well i, yeah. I vaguely remember that being in there but everyone had anarchist cookbook i fucking remember middle school that was big for me are i'm we, sorry what'd you say who had the anarchist we, cookbook who did <laughs> everyone are oh, we okay, sure good just make judge, sure are we sure the judge even knew this was in a video game or was he sitting there like what he's a wizard yeah. <laughs> <He's definitely laughs> <a fucking> <laughs> <laughs> Anarchist cookbook. Technically, what I actually had was the up, recently updated at the time Jolly Rogers cookbook, with, like added on stuff. It's pretty much the same exact thing, but I had downloaded it off of like uTorrent or something like that. And so then they come in, and I've told this story before, but they basically came into the courtroom and they were like, "We found files on his computer for how to make cherry pit arsenic." And and like I always say in the story, and this is sarcasm, FBI, because one of them's gonna see this. I basically was like. You caught me. I was going to buy two 18-wheelers full of cherries, grind down all the pits, make two <laughs> gallons of arsenic, sneak into the school, and get the lunch, guys. You caught me. Congratulations, man. Job well done. You foiled me again, Scooby-Doo. And then, um, <laughs> and also another one of them was how to drag a, how to, I don't even know what the hell this is still. Cause I'm not going to fucking Google it, but, uh, how to detonate a blasting cap with an exercise bike. <laughs> You should re-Google it just to make sure you've got the details right. Yeah, let me make sure real quick that this is the file that <laughs> I had. Yeah, knock, knock. <laughs> is there anyone you'd like to threaten right now? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to shout out. No, definitely not. <laughs> no, There's sure. someone I'd like to threaten, though. <laughs> I'd like to threaten anyone that's still using old-fashioned kitty litter. You're fucking up. Uh, Tell about uh, it, Andrew. Well, yeah, mm. we'd, like to, we'd like to give a big old shout out to Pretty Litter. Because Pretty uh -huh. Litter is mm -hmm. kitty litter reinvented. Unlike traditional litter, Pretty Litter's super light crystals trap odor and release moisture, resulting in dry, low-maintenance litter that doesn't smell. Pretty Litter is virtually dust-free because small. it's manufactured with specialized de-dusting processes. Less dust, no fuss. It also spares everyone's sanity and storage space because it's shipped in small, lightweight bags that last an entire month. No more... No more bulky containers or frequent trips to the store. Kaya, you have two cats yourself. How much do you fucking hate traditional litter? 
Oh man, I really hate it. They they toss it everywhere, especially when they're trying to hide their poo and such. And my small cat, she isn't, you know, she's kind of dull. She isn't very smart. So sometimes she just forgets to or she doesn't get it properly. So the big one jumps in to help her with it. So he usually covers her shits <laughs> up like a good big, big brother. But they always make a mess. And if you have the bad kind of kitty litter, which is, you know, the kind made out of clay and such, it dusts up so much. And all that shit goes into your lungs. Way worse for you than smoking and vaping or whatever. That's actual like kitten piss infested dust that goes right into your lungs all right shit infused you don't want that with pretty pretty litter much easier you can go on their website they immediately basically all you have to fill out is how many cats you have you say i have one cat two cats and then every month they send you enough kitty litter to last both of them enough pretty litter i should say Uh, to last both of them and you have to only fill the box once and then every time they take a dump you clean it out and that's pretty much it next month you get your next shipment you don't anymore have to walk through the grocery store looking for the pet aisle to get the correct kind and weight and then you have to schlep it around back to your car and it's just also tedious you don't have to mess with any of that go to prettylitter.com and use our code op op just the two letters for 20 percent off your first purchase by the way, I keep forgetting this, but also what's nice is when your key, uh, when your cat pees into the litter, depending on your cat's health, it changes color. So you can you know, see easily if there's something wrong with your kitty. And if you maybe need to make a, an appointment at the vet, you know, they, they I, I think they can detect like alkaline levels, the acidity of the urine for different things. So it changes colors immediately. So you can always keep tabs on your cat's well-being, which is nice. Uh, pretty it's litter. A great feature. Mm-hmm. Pretty litter. dot com code op on checkout, and you get twenty percent off. Beautiful. Uh, so we've gone. <laughs> we've gone through the first act of your tale, yeah. Josh. Now we get to the part w- about prison. What the fuck is that like? Because you didn't go to, to like jungle. no weenie. Hu- we got fun yeah. games. You did not go to a weenie hut junior prison. You went to a federal prison, which yeah. is like some top tier shit. There's this great. Yeah, how many how many other shit? offenders did you have to bunk with who were also like RuneScape criminals? <laughs> uh, there were Maybe about 43, the... 44. No zero. I don't even think I ever met anybody that had even heard of RuneScape. I met two guys in the whole bit that had heard of RuneScape. Wow. So wait, did you go around telling prisoners, yeah, I'm in for RuneScape crimes? I'm sure they t- like, talk to each other like, hey, what are you in for? And Josh's case, I, I would have made something up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Went on a, a real spree. No, they, uh, <laughs> they, 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 they need, people they need some paperwork on you. You know, if you're going to be navigating properly and not getting your ass kicked all the time, they need, to, they need you to fork over some paperwork. So they'd be like, what are you in there from? Like domestic terrorism? They're like, are you fucking serious? I pull out my paperwork, transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives, transmitting threats to kill and injure the person of another. Yeah, I was playing an online video game, talking shit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Clarence Heatley, the black hand of death, was at the first prison I was at. He's real famous. He kidnapped Bobby Brown and stuff like that. And he looked at my paperwork and just fell over laughing. I mean, he's been locked up (laughs) since before the internet was even a thing, of course, but he still was just like, you gotta be kidding me. This is that shit that I see on TV and you were over here talking trash on one of these games and you're in prison now. Um, (laughs) It was definitely a little surreal. Mo- they, they they really couldn't believe it. They thought it was pretty funny. Most young, baby-faced, skinny, white kids, especially because I have my glasses on, uh, they're in the feds for things that are not so good, and they typically get, you know, shipped, sent to another prison <laughs> when they land at the one that I landed at because they get hurt. And uh, I'd be like, nope, that ain't me, buddy. I got my papers right here. You can Google it. It's uh, It's been taken pretty seriously. I am not any kind of a – I don't have any sex crimes, nothing like that. I didn't tell on anybody. Uh, 100% golden. <laughs> and they pretty much thought it was the funniest shit ever. No, you know what so they you didn't say. Have, like a tough time then with the, no, with man. the other inmates. Charlie, you know nah. what they say. You you find the biggest toughest guy in prison. You walk up to him and you challenge him to a RuneScape duel. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. man. Exactly. You walk up and you're like, "Hey, boy, you better not. I got 99 strength, dog. You better not. You better back up." <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in a comment on the silent court interview. Somebody was like, a, 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 a guy in prison that played RuneScape, he'll never make it. And somebody was like, shit, he's going to pull out a shank and be like, DDS spec, go. Hit him with the dragon dagger. <laughs> that ought to earn your respective Bobby Clam hands or whatever the fuck his name was. So what's the thing you missed Bobby most from yeah, the real world? What kind of stuff just, was it easy to adopt back? Adapt back? 
Um, I'm still not like, I wouldn't say that I'm still great at it. I mean, you guys saw how we started the stream over here. Like, okay, wait, is it okay if my screen's black on the side? So I just push record. Like I'm really behind on technology. Obviously I've got my, I got my first smartphone in 2017, whenever I got out, you know, I mean, not mm. smartphone, sorry. My first touchscreen smartphone. I'd had a Blackberry at the time that I got arrested. If that fucking tells you anything. And, um, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at this on a curved screen right now on a computer that's glowing. I don't even think a computer like this would like existed in 2012 whenever I got locked up, man. Um, as far as trying to boil it down to what I miss the most about the free world, man, there's really, I, I can't even put it on one thing. Just the free world is the only way I can even put it. You know, I still, when I go outside, man, I still smile a little bit when there's no razor wire around me. I can walk as far as I want. I can get in the car and drive down the street, man. You know, shit that people take for granted. Oh man, pizza. Oh, pizza. Um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit too much for me to even go into detail about the stuff that I missed. Obviously, I mean, it's a whole different like alternate universe in there. But uh, in regard to what I, like, am behind on, um, memes, obviously. <laughs> it's not worth that's your up. priority? Yeah, yeah that's it's fine. Not, not worth catching up. <laughs> you go to jail and freak out then, that you'll miss so many memes? That, that's what happened, oh. man. I, I went in there and I was just having a cold panic attack. Like, oh, no, man, what's, what's B going to do without me, man? Uh, Where's Big Chungus? On the yeah. plus side. Big Chungus. I come out and I'm trying to catch up. I'm over here like, okay, let's see here. Purple Aki, Ugandan Knuckles, Googling memes from 2015, memes from 2016, <laughs> Whip, Nay Nay, Dab. What, what do we do here? Uh, that stuff doesn't really like penetrate, you know, especially at the medium securities where I was at because not like a ton of just like young people that are real hip and up to date go there. Because it's normally for like, to be honest with you, I went to a medium high security prison. That's normally for the kind of hardened criminals that have a record. You know? But um, tell your girlfriend I was like to just really, really, really close. Tell her to smuggle some memes into the prison for you and her ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Baby, listen, all you got to do is hit print screen, paste it in the paint, print it off. Mail me a packet. Put the, Shove it up your ass. Put, the, yeah, put so it in a piece of paper. Yeah, put it in the spine of the Bible. <laughs> yeah, you got the knuckles <laughs> in your ass. Put it inside a cake. <laughs> Did you get conjugal visits? Yeah, because we totally get cake. No, absolutely not. No conjugal visits whatsoever. Oh, the no smoking, no drinking of any sort allowed, no conjugal visits. You get to go to visitation. Um, at the first prison that I was at, they really weren't tripping about, like, you tonguing your girlfriend, you know, uh, squeezing a little booty. But I didn't have to worry about that. My girlfriend broke up with me, like, 28 days after I got to jail or, like, a month <laughs> or something like that. I don't think she quite made it a mutt. So uh, I was riding it out in there alone as far as the romance goes. Oh um, God. thankfully, you know, in the end I was, uh, I was pretty, pretty glad for that. That was the best decision for all of us. Now I'm happily married, like to the love of my life and not being sandbagged or anything by that girl is the reason that happened. But, um, even, even so I don't think anybody would have tried to smuggle me anything. They, uh, they know me and I would have been pushing the limit. I'd been over here like, uh, yeah, you, know, you could probably fit like an ounce, you know, and you just, you know. You could probably get a small laptop in that butthole, maybe. Right, yeah. like, don't <laughs> act like I don't know your dimensions. I know you can fit at least a phone in there. <laughs> I need to train my agility in RuneScape. I'm a little behind. That's what I say, man. The uh, the five years that I served, the saddest part is I could have got 60 agility while I was in there, man. Damn it. Mm. Yeah, did you ever... Just barely with five years with that fucking skill. Did you yeah, ever exactly. play again? Yeah, I, uh, I still play it. I played for like eight hours yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for it. <laughs> I'm kind of famous on it now. I'm kind of famous on the game now. Like, I'll be walking around and somebody will see my username and they're like, oh shit, what's up, Josh? Welcome back, man. Or I get private messages. I leave my private chat on so I can message the people back that, you know, write to me to show support and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely still play it. I'm playing this <laughs> since 2004. I'm not about to stop now. Wait, they didn't ban you from the game? No, they muted that account, but I started a new account whenever I got out. And also, uh, from what I've been told... Uh, the interview that I did with Silent Core, I don't know if you guys know Silent Core or not, the Scottish Gamer YouTube channel. I initially did an interview with him, um, and it got like a half a million hits in just like oh, two weeks or something like that, and then abruptly stopped to like zero. It gets like three views a week now. But he um, he pretty much put my whole channel on, and um, when I got out, we did that interview, man. I had 10,000 subscribers before I even had a video. Uh, I forgot my first point. What the hell? I'm still burnt out, man. Still playing uh, RuneScape. Was the question? Yeah, I still play. It. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just started a new account, but uh, uh, Jagex knows who I am, and they know what happened because what I was gonna say is that interview got put apparently in a Jagex memo at the office. Like they emailed Ooh. it to everybody. The interview that I did with him. So like they're all fully aware of the fact that I went to prison for many years for some shit that I said on RuneScape. Um, and I actually, as soon as I started my new account, whenever I got home on house arrest last time. I started my new account. It was like Christmas Eve. I was all excited and stuff like that. Uh, the interview was popping. 
I got to tell everybody I was playing again. And, um, like somebody came in the clan chat that I was in and was like, Hey man, what exactly do you, uh, or somebody I didn't know was in there. They were like, did you go to prison? What did you go to prison for? And I was like, Oh, I said that I'm going, I was going to uh, shoot up a school while I was playing runescape. Oh, and I, got, I got muted <laughs> for three days, like two days later. So I put an appeal and I was like, I'm that guy, you idiots. I wasn't saying I'm going to again. Like, don't do this to me again. Now I'm going to <laughs> appeal, you know? And, uh, like four days after that, they wiped it. I mean, after I got unmuted naturally, of course, once the mute wore off, then they fixed it and wiped it off my record. But so, I mean, they know who I am and stuff like that. Um, I'm friends with a whole lot of really famous RuneScape players too. Like the top dogs in the game. I pretty much shoot the breeze with them all the time. Good shit, man. Well, it seems like you turned it around to more of a positive thing. How, if it was me, I would have, I don't think I would have ever recovered, to be honest. You have to have some really strong mental fortitude to go through that kind of bullshit and come out the way you did, I'd say. So absolute respect there. But how long did it take you to really, you know, get over the initial shock and anger of going to federal prison over some runescape? What were those emotions like? Like, what was the process of those emotions? Uh, I'd say it was probably a little over two years, about two and a half years before I started realizing I had to let it go. You know, Um, for one thing, my first prison sentence, man, I did a lot of drugs whenever I got there. I was like, I wasn't I didn't take it out on inmates, obviously don't want to get my ass kicked. But I, I I was pretty much like internally in a bad mood most of the time. I was glad that like we had guitars there, you could check our guitars, and I just like I'd go out to the rec yard and uh, I'd check out a guitar and just play for like seven hours a day for two and a half, three straight years. But uh, gradually over time, man, uh I actually got really into Buddhism, which I'm not that into anymore. But uh, I got really heavily into it for a good solid two years while I was in there, man. And just gradually, I started to be like, okay, you know what? This is what happened. There's nothing I can do about it. I fucked up. This was my mistake. They went overboard, but I gave them the chance in the first place. And the only way that I'm ever going to be able to make anything positive out of this is if I start realizing that I have to take responsibility for what I said and what I did and start trying to see if I can turn it into a positive or not. I'm sure I can make something positive out of this if I try to. And then ever since I got out, shit's just been crazy. I mean, I did the Sonic War interview. I'm, I'm on official right now. I went up with Count Dankula, you know. Um, I'm not getting any views on any of my videos now, but I still have 23,000 subscribers, and I have a really strong community that I have now, you know. Um, and people all the time tell me, they say, man, after I learned about your case, by the time they would learned about it, 2013, 2014, I, st- I changed the way that I troll people on the internet. Like, I'm still a smart ass, but I don't say crazy outlandish shit anymore. And that kind of makes it more worth it to me. You know what I mean? Like, if I had to go down to save 100 people from going through what I went through, well, it's for the greater good then. And, um, it, yeah, it was about it was about two and a half years or so before I started really, like, I was getting into meditation and stuff and trying to, like, view the bigger picture and, like, I don't know where my life's going to go from here, but I'm not in here for life sentence. I got another chance. It's going to be all right. Uh, not yet. My life was fucked anyways, dude. I mean, I was I was an addict, and I wasn't doing anything with my life. I didn't want to get a job. I was mooching off of my girlfriend and my mom, and I needed a wake-up call pretty badly. I was really immature, and I had a lot of morbid interests that definitely uh, didn't look good when we got in the courtroom. And then I was surrounded by these fucking maniacs on all side that 100% put it in my mind, like, stop breaking the law. You're going to be here with these dudes. Do you want to be waking up in this every day for the rest of your life? Like, you got to get it together, man. So eventually I kind of turned to introspective instead of, you know, like, just blaming everybody else for it. That's really when I started to change. That's a really good takeaway, man. Even even something, like, not extreme about prison, but just the the ability to reflect on your own way and how you perceive things, I think is a really important skill for pretty much anyone. Yeah. yeah but I let's not about it, man. And I was like, you know what uh, they did, they went overboard, but they couldn't have done shit to me if I didn't mess up in the first place, you know? Yeah. I don't I know. Did I something mean, it's really, really taboo and really, really bad. And no, I disagree. Yeah, they you didn't do to it. But the fact is I put myself, you, you talk I mean, shit, I, but there wasn't any evidence of yeah, you actually going to do anything. That's that is still on them. Yeah, true. Entirely. I think it was an abortion of justice, to be honest. <laughs> not, not not a miscarriage, but an abortion of justice. <laughs> no, it was All a right, deliberate yeah, abortion of justice. That. That's fucking ridiculous. They tried to make an example out of you. Um, yeah, they did, man. I was the scapegoat, especially by the time I got to jail, dude. Like seven more mass shootings had happened. Not just Newtown, but like. I mean, just all over the place, dude. Stuff was starting to happen every week, you know, and there was more pressure on them to stop these guys, and they obviously weren't. And then they're like, okay, well, we got a live one, I guess is the attitude that they adopted. So they really, yeah. really went above and beyond, yeah. dude. They Rather than saying, we checked it out, everything's cool, the dude doesn't fit the profile, et cetera, they said he does fit the profile. We uh, we 
we caught one. You know, they, they went as hard as they possibly mm-hmm. could. And I'd also like to point out the fact that a lot of teachers from that school actually wrote character reference letters straight to the judge and said that they knew me and they knew that I popped off at the mouth a lot, but that I was not a danger to anybody. I wasn't that kind of guy. Didn't matter at all. Yeah. So it sounded uh, like you had a supportive community around you. You just had a really hard on judge to fuck you in the ass. Yeah, absolutely. The real crazy part is he's actually That's a really up, good man. judge. I have to be unbiased here, dude, and say that like in most cases, this judge is actually really, really reasonable and sensible. And he gives people the low end of their sentence a lot. They call him low end is his nickname. And, um, in general, man, he seems to be a fairly compassionate judge. I have to give that to him. I've seen him be very fair with people, uh, even lenient on people that I felt like didn't even deserve it. You know, from an inmate perspective, I didn't feel like they deserved it. And, um, he had, he, he had it out for me, dude. He, he can't stand me. He almost broke the gavel when he sent it to me. The probation officer walked up to my lawyer and was like, I'm going to go make sure that he dismisses count one, but I'm not going to talk to him right now because for some reason he is mad. He's in a horrible mood. What and, a dumbass. Uh, I mean, it manifested again when I went back before him. Every time I tried to appeal my sentence, of course, it lands right on his fucking desk. Great system, America. Is there Jesus any way Christ. that you can go through a legal proceeding to, like, get retried on things with a different judge or get some sort of... <laughs> yeah, do you want to do that now? Do you want to go back <laughs> yeah. to the this, this shit is frustrating me immensely, mm-hmm. and I, I hope there's some legal procedure that goes, hey, the judge was clearly biased against me here. Hey, this charge should be removed from my record or something. Some form of, look, guys, I got kind of fucked over I here, think you know what I mean? But legally speaking... You'd have a much harder time today. Than even back in 2012. Yeah, yeah probably so. Um, and also in regard to, you know, like an attempt to get it off of my record or whatever or have a different judge, the most that I can really say about that at this point is stay tuned. <laughs> nah, man, well, you tell It sounds like you're yeah. at least... These days, yeah, you know what they like do today to... is find some 10-year-old tweet you made calling someone a cunt and then uh, reach that in as evidence for why you want to go around murdering women or something and harassing them and stalking them. Yeah, when it, dude, this is the crazy thing. When we got the long transcript of my whole three days, they took – Jagex finally forked up the last three days of conversations I had on RuneScape prior to this incident, completely full of nonsense. I mean, not necessarily violent stuff, but just absolute bullshit that I was talking because it was RuneScape. And um, so they throw that up in front of me, and this is the crazy part, dude. This is when I realized that, like, maybe my lawyer wasn't really totally as committed to trying to get me off the hook as he could have been. I – um. I, they, they gave us the transcripts. I get to reading it. I call my lawyer because they sent it to me in the jail. It's like 50 pages, you know. I start reading it. And I found the argument. Um, and I said, I called my lawyer. I said, look here. Look, look. I can show you in the paper where I said I was being sarcastic. It says it right here. It says it's called sarcasm. Well, the next thing that he does is file a motion for us to go to court and exclude this document from the evidence. Right. <laughs> and and I was like, what the hell? This is the old, I told you the day that we met, I told you that I said I was being sarcastic. It's right here on the paper. This is what I was talking about. This proves that I was telling the truth. And he goes, well, listen, listen, listen. This is three whole days of the transcript here. You said a lot of wild stuff. I'm pretty sure the bad is going to outweigh the good. And I was like, no, this proves my fucking point that all that we do is sit here and talk trash to each other on these video games, dude. This is this is 100 percent evidence. So what happens is the feds filed a response motion to our motion to exclude it as evidence. Fucking agreed. That's the only motion that they agreed on the entire duration of my case. They said, okay, you know what? You're right. We should probably just leave this out. We're going to do him a favor and leave out these three days of evidence uh, of chats right here. Mm-hmm. It's a moot point. So the judge wait, ruled it as a moot point wait, and excluded so, it. So both both the court and your lawyer agreed to exclude yes. that? Yes. That what? should not happen. We're on opposite teams here. What was your lawyer's reasoning behind he said, excluding He said that, that the, it was too much random shit. He was like, look, you, you said a lot of crazy stuff here, and I'm sitting here trying to prove the point. I said, look at this. On page 15, I said I was a fucking famous French guitar player named Matt Rash. This shows that everything <laughs> that we do is just pulling stuff out of our ass, bro. Like, this, if anything, this is the most exculpatory piece of evidence that we have. I'm not well, French. Now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an important question. Yes. Are you Matt Rash? No, I'm not. <laughs> the I Matt wish. Rash. I wish I was. Because that would you know, change about everything. Or are you just messing with me? You know who I'm actually talking about? No. <laughs> no. I thought you made up a name. No, 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 no. He really is a famous French guitar player. So, of course, I'm like, type me in on YouTube. My name's Matt Rash. And they're like, oh, what? That's not you. This is RuneScape. <laughs> But, of course, the feds didn't think about that. You know, I'm sitting there going, this is the best piece of evidence that we have, in my opinion, is that this is just like the most random nonsense I could possibly say. At one point, I was talking about being a chemist 
And I'm not a fucking chemist. I was sitting there like, yeah, I know how to synthesize LSD. You just do this and this and just like <laughs> pull it out of my ass because it was RuneScape, man. And you get in conversation with people when you're doing boring shit. And no, man, they weren't having it. Yeah, they were I not think they either. So they, they both, they, 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 either the judge ruled it a moot point. They either didn't care or they just got scared genuinely because they're old fucks fossils who don't understand that who you know if you showed them 4chan they try to get it shut down that's what i'm screaming dude that 4chan was actually a relatively large part of my case to be honest with you uh if i remember right yeah they brought up 4chan because yeah. 4chan had that like scare around it like yep. anonymous and shit Still yeah, exactly they, they, i mean the hacker collective known as anonymous um when, they, when, they, when there was a chill that went through the room, he was the, the FBI computer analysis guy was there and he was uh, talking about the contents of my computer. And he was like, and him being the FBI guy, I bet he was really surprised that I had tour on my computer, but absolutely no illegal pornography. He was probably like, what the fuck? Hey, this kid doesn't have anything super nasty on here and he's got tour. And, they, and I bet the guy next to him was like, whatever, dude, I bet you a hundred bucks. I find something. But uh, he got up there and he was like, um, the majority of these folders and files, including the anarchist cookbook, were eventually transferred and saved to a file called 4chan. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just see the judge's eyes you know it's up. over Dude, yeah, I, when 4chan gets dropped in the courtroom you lose every, the entire everyone jury. audibly <laughs> gasped when they yeah. heard that 4chan <gasps> and the funny thing is he doesn't know what download is it's like Voldemort they're such fucking fossils yeah, exactly. man you guys see this thing the where the UK shall not be named. the UK police is now warning parents to check if their children are using Linux and chatting on Discord because if so they may be hackers you guys seen this shit oh my god yeah, man. That's awesome. Just, <laughs> is no, that a real movement? That. I know how to hack. Yeah, it's in our topics channel know, right there. I, I know how to hack men's fashion. I mean, if you've ever browsed asking. 4chan, then you're automatically a hardcore black hat hacker. So, Tell us um, about MVMT exactly right. Jackson this time. I, I, the, what, no. what I thought was really funny was that they don't know what download means, but when they said 4chan, everybody's eyes, eyebrows raised, you know? They probably saw that old Fox uh, News video. You remember that where it shows the van exploding? They call themselves anonymous. <laughs> yeah, that's they fucking are the crazy. Hacker collective. The, the only time your eyebrows should raise in complete interest is when you see a movement watch on someone's wrist or perhaps some other <laughs> movement stylings. That's because movement was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. They've sold almost two million watches worldwide by bringing quality designs at fair prices. Movement watches are all about looking good while keeping things simple. They don't tell you how many steps you've taken. They don't blow up your wrist with text messages. They don't look stupid. Like, there's a, there's a lot of modern smartwatches and a lot of modern watch designs that they just look dumb and goofy, and they're just trying way too hard. Not movement. Movement uses true classic timepieces, and they know exactly how they should look and look good while looking the way they do. Movement watches start at just $95.00. They can cost about $400 for the same thing from a traditional brand. And they've sold almost 2 million watches in over 160 countries. You can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. Movement's launching new styles on their site all the time. Check it out at mvmt.com. mvmt.com slash official to join the movement and find a watch that suits you. I don't know why every living human being on the planet doesn't at least try it when it has free shipping and free returns. Mm -hmm. Literally nothing to lose. Just try mm -hmm. it. They're nice watches. What else yeah, do I have good to say? Watches. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought that you time. meant because I miss technology. <laughs> 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 like your eyebrows should raise an interest whenever you see these new wrist straps that we got that are, uh, keep up with your movement. <laughs> That's kind of what I thought you meant. <laughs> yeah, nah. well, if you saw a movement watch, you'd be amazed. Oh, you would me. be. You wouldn't be able to contain <laughs> After yourself. After doing time in the slammer, <laughs> yeah. you'd be thinking you're lucky stars you got They like, look better like, uh, than handcuffs, <laughs> trust me. If if you've been removed oh, from no. society for many years and mm. want to make a good major purchase, I'd say a movement watch is a great place to start. Oh, that's a good question. What was your first purchase on your days of freedom, like your early days of freedom? Uh, the very first thing that I bought was a pack of fucking Newports when I got to Walmart after I got out of the halfway <laughs> house. But um, uh, so wait, 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 that didn't that didn't like force you to quit your smoking habit? Oh, uh, no, uh, I, I, I mentioned this briefly earlier, so I guess the people in here will know. But um, 
being in prison in the feds, you're not allowed to have any tobacco products, but um, the COs are allowed to step outside and smoke or, you know, particularly dip. I'm from the South, so uh, as you can surely tell by my speech pattern. And um, pretty much all of the COs there dip. They're big old country boys. They uh, spit their dip in a Coke bottle or whatever. They throw it in the trash, and they're supposed to keep an eye on it ostensibly. Uh, they turn their back for two minutes, and an inmate's going to reach in there and grab that bottle of spit out, chewed up, soaked up dip and spit, and they dry out the dip in it roll it up and smoke it. Um, obviously, every now and then a CO that's crooked will bring in some packs of smokes, but it's pretty expensive. It's about $15 for an entire cigarette because they cut it into three and sell each part for $5. So most people just smoke Dipperettes, uh, also known as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Uh, already been chewed dip. Everybody's fucking getting heavily into is what, <laughs> is what they used to jokingly refer to it as. And, wow. Uh, yeah, I know. They took that That's way too far. That's an impressive acronym. Holy shit. Yeah, that is a long one. <laughs> Look, hey, we got a lot of free time in there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so between that and regular cigarette, and the funny thing is everybody goes, oh, that's disgusting. I would never, ever do that. Yeah, unless you've been smoking for a decade and then you don't have anything to smoke anymore and everybody's smoking it and not getting sick and you can smell it and it smells like a cigarette, you'd be surprised. Um, so, yeah, I still maintained a pretty, uh, a pretty standard nicotine habit all the way through. Um, when I got out of prison, though, the next day was a Friday night. I got out on a Thursday. The next day, they take everybody at the halfway house in a van to Walmart so we can run around like chickens with our head cut off for two and a half hours and buy what we need. The halfway house is super laid back, man. They're actually really chill there. And uh, so they drop a whole van full of convicts off at the Walmart. And everybody at the Walmart knows that like Friday nights when the herd of convicts comes in. And um, the first thing that I did, I made a buddy named John that was there. And uh, we, we went to the technology section, obviously. I was like, bro, we got to see what the hell's going on. This is crazy. And I had a smartphone, like a touch screen. Uh, it was a little $50 Alcatel, man, but it was blowing my mind. So I go up and I see my first curved TV ever. The damn thing looked like a UFO. It looked better than real life to me, you know? I mean, we were we were cracking on some 1080p when I got locked up. You know what's and, um, even better now <laughs> for you? And, you can buy that curved that? screen. You can go home and you can binge watch every single best tv show of the last decade you don't have to wait for anything yeah that's the one upside is you can binge all of breaking bad oh oh great that one of all breaking bad well (laughs) i think i've watched about five episodes of it but last night i almost got done with stranger things i just finished messiah and i'm working on stranger things while i play runescape um i walked i walked up to the, the tv man and i was just basically drooling on myself and like i said uh the the locals know when the convicts are coming and you'd be surprised. A lot of women of like questionable repute hang around the Walmart uh, on that night. And uh, me and my buddy John walked into this TV and these two girls saw us. And I was like, boo, this is crazy. This TV's curved, man. What the hell is going on? This is 2017, man. We're living in the future. These girls walk up to us and they're like, hey, did y'all just get out of prison? And I, I found out later that John was gay. I couldn't give a shit less. I'm just saying it was funny to me because uh, women regarded this dude as like totally <laughs> irresistible. Very, very handsome man, evidently, because yeah. women would snap their neck looking at this dude when he walked by. He was only like 22. He had just gotten out of the feds. He did like a little time for some stupid charge, like six months at a low security or something. Um, he, he was not interested at all. So I turned and looked at the girls, and I turned bright red, and I turned my happy ass around, and I walked off, and I had to catch my breath for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that was a oh, that was a real-life actual female right there that's not wearing a blue shirt and screaming at me. Oh, my God. And, um, that's a, oh, I didn't even think about that. Wow. Yeah, that must have been like a fucking shock. You must have felt like some twitch chat incel meeting a girl for the first time. That must have been totally <laughs> surreal. Yeah, it was uh, – it was definitely a little wild to say the least. I was not, I didn't have any game anymore. Uh, prior to going to prison, I feel like, and uh, I'm sorry because I know my wife is going to watch this, but I feel like I always did pretty well with women, you know what I mean? And I naturally assumed that I wasn't getting rusty when I was in prison. Um, I was like, yeah, I still, I remember how to talk to the ladies, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's easy, man. It's always been natural until I got face to face with one in the wild. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I was on the retreat mode, man. Uh, I was definitely flinching away. Uh, it didn't really start getting any better at all until the Silent Core interview aired. And then I had a lot of girls messaging me and stuff. My game was still so bad when I met the girl that became my wife. Um, any of my friends that listen to this are going to crack up or if they've watched the video on my YouTube channel. But I actually faked the British accent whenever I met her to get her attention, to uh, get, her, oh, to get her interest. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, listen, man, I used to do that back in the day. and I was always pretty successful. My wife was not into it. We pretty much did not text again after that. She was not into me at all. It's a real long it now. story. But that's how little game that I had. I was like, all right, I know how I'm going to get her attention. Show I'm just going to walk up and start doing the British accent like I did whenever I was 18. Yeah, try and uh, pretend Jackson's your beautiful wife. How mm-hmm. did you start that conversation? 
conversation in the British accent. Well, I was in the mall and I walked up and I was like, excuse me, do you know where I can go to find Dick Sporting Goods? I'm not sure exactly where it is. I'm here in the mall somewhere because I know which way to turn. And all of her friends are like, whoa. And she's like, um, over there. <laughs> It was, uh, it didn't work too well. The, Very good. Thank you, thank Cheerio. you, thank you. Cheerio, uh, cheerio. Cheerio. Yeah. Would you like some tea? <laughs> Wanna shoot a bloody yeah, school? She wasn't feeling it. Was fucking goofy. What was your long-term plan if you did get with it? You were going to have to fake yeah, <laughs> your British that far accent ahead. for the majority of it? I didn't think that far ahead. So my main plan was basically to try and get her number, and what happens, happens after that. Uh, I walked away from her. And then without asking for a number and then like beating myself up going, you asshole, you idiot. Why did you even do that? If you're not going to ask for a number, man, you, go back and do it, man. Shit. So I turned around, I went back and asked her number and she looked like I had just like, like asked her like the killer dog or something, but she gave me her number. And after like 24 hours texting, she was like, I actually took her number down wrong. And I found her on Instagram. She had 20,000 Instagram subscribe followers. Sorry. And, uh, a very unique name, so I managed to find her. It took me like two hours, dude, but I looked for her. I'm not even kidding you, man. It's one of them, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, got her number correct, and uh, then we started texting, and like a few hours later, she was like, just so you know, uh, everybody has that person for them out there. I believe that, but I'm not the one for you, and um, I, I think you'll find her out there, and we can be friends, and no heterosexual male that I've ever met in my life wants to be just friends with the woman that is my wife now. Um, I ended up going to rehab, <laughs> sent by the court, even though I didn't get caught relapsing. I had, but they didn't catch me. Um, and whenever I got out of rehab, she randomly texted me. And uh, she was like, because when I did finally come out of it, dude, whenever I told her the truth, I realized the British thing wasn't working. So I was like, look, this is what I really sound like. I actually sent her the silent core interview. <laughs> so it was kind of like humble brag, sort of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got to pull out all the stops, man. Yeah, yeah man, you I, I had to go 100. <laughs> and so uh, that must I have been such truth. a fucking what a change from British to Southern. <laughs> yeah, I know. And especially as deep as my voice is, but I look so young. Like I, I look, well, somebody once told me that I have the the body of a sixteen year old emo kid and the voice of a forty year old firefighter. So I'm sure it was quite the culture shock. You're like, look, honey, and, um, I didn't actually like, go you? to Oxford. I was in prison. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. The Oxford that I'm from is Oxford, Mississippi. <laughs> I'm from 40 minutes away. So, um, that's where actually where I got arrested was Oxford, Mississippi. And the funny thing is, the main thing that she was disappointed about was just the fact that I lied to her at all. It wasn't even necessarily about the lie itself. It's just that I started off talking to her with a straight up lie. And um, it was a pretty long story, man. I actually made a 30 minute video about it on my YouTube, which was not a wonderful idea. Um, but it's, uh, it's got like 8,000, 9,000 views, which is not when did you guess, get married? horrible for me. This must have been recent. Uh, October 11th. I was okay. still at the halfway uh, house. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, me through my violation. Thank you, man. We're three months away from having a little baby girl. We just got our apartment, and uh, we should be moving in in a few days. So I'm picking up the pieces, man. Oh, congratulations, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm thrilled. What a huge turnaround, man. You <laughs> congratulations after being dealt such a shit hand. You got locked yeah, away I, for like I, I, years and years, and you still scored a woman and put a ring on her. And there's still people out oh, there yeah. just in cells, desperately chatting it up on Twitch, hoping that maybe one day she'll respond or something. Fuck, take a hint. Yeah, I, for yeah, real. Them, like, them Twitch dudes are thirsty, bro. There's always going to be someone out there. It's just a matter of not being a fucking degenerate about it, like complaining yeah. in private discords about women and how much you hate women or Twitch chats demanding things or feeling entitled. Most of the guys that bitch the most about women have not really had very many of them, I feel. Well, I, I, I found that to be... To talk about. That goes for both sexes, right? You go... Uh, we talked last week about these female incels with the attitude, at least on Twitter, and you can always tell it's not some, you know, conclusion they've reached after a long meditation on the subject. It just You clearly just had one shitty date, and now it's everyone else's right. fault. Same it's with reactionary. The, yeah, very. Mm -hmm. Have you guys... I don't know if you guys kept up, so keep uh, staying on the topic of free speech with the girl who told her boyfriend to kill himself in his car. You guys yeah. remember that oh, one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he did. And she recently, so yep. this led to a whole rigmarole about, you know, people debating free speech and uh, such. Uh, should she be held accountable for it or not? And as far as I remember that I read up recently, she did get convicted. Um, yeah, that, I don't I know how, for how long. Yeah, she did. She tried to fight it for a while. I'm blanking on her name. It was like... She's the one with the goofy smile, right? Yeah. Uh, she had a really, like, scary look on her she's face a, in the court. She's a sociopath, clearly, but what the fuck was her name? Yeah, I would think so. 
You don't think I so? I can't remember what her name was. I know you're talking about, though. That case is actually brought up a lot whenever they're dealing with my case because the guy was telling me to kill myself, but he didn't get in trouble, you know, I guess because I didn't, didn't do Mich it. Michelle Carter. Yeah. Well, so I'm a little conflicted on that yeah. because obviously, look, you cannot just criminalize people telling each other to kill themselves, right? So, what? you know, uh, it's a favorite pastime of every teenager to go on Twitter <laughs> or 4chan or whatever, Reddit, and just tell people, go kill yourself, you fucking nerd. It's fun. Yeah. But this AYS. girl went way beyond that. She she egged this guy on as he was sitting in his car, not sure if he should or shouldn't do it. And she just genuinely worked him and manipulated Push him over the, the course of like, what, hours, I think, and a uh, hundred messages to genuinely convince him to kill himself. So she knew yeah, if she did her job right. That's different than just video game banter. I know. It, that. That's why I'm conflicted. Sure uh, I've seen a lot of people say, you know, free speech that's just our free speech rights but if that's how we're going to argue there's a lot of people who just use their speech to get people killed right i mean charles manson never actually killed anyone himself should he True. have been let free right he always Ooh, just told his checkmate hmm? that's a good point yeah i didn't consider that he, he, did, he never killed anybody the feds yeah. will tell you. he never had any blood um, on his own hands yeah, i can tell you that so, as far as the legal definition of it goes, the thing, the, the only thing that is supposedly not protected by the First Amendment is anything that may be constituted as a true threat. So I guess that they essentially applied that standard to her and found that her telling him to kill himself in all seriousness mm -hmm. was a true threat, you know, because he was on the verge of it or whatever. I guess it's up to interpretation. Um, that's why, because everybody always tells me, you can say whatever you want. And I'm like, no, you actually can't say whatever you want. I've looked into law about this a lot. So obviously, and, uh, you can say, you can even use conditional statements. There was a guy who got charged with my same crime, threatening to kill and injure the person of another, because in the sixties, he said, if I get sent to the, uh, Vietnam, first person I'm pointing my gun at is the president. They arrested him. He beat it because it was a conditional statement. Mm. If blank, then blank for something that wasn't that likely to happen. Yeah. That I was mean, protected. Whereas if you just say, I want to, or I'm going to, actually, you can say, I want to. And incitement. You say, I'm going to. As far as I know, incitement then, yeah, is. Yeah, then it's uh, actually considered a threat. All right. So if I, you know, if you said, uh, hey, everyone, take up your arms. You know what? Charles White is going to be at Burger King tomorrow morning at noon. Shoot him. That's, for example, <laughs> not <laughs> legal, right? That's not protected. Nope, that is yeah, not I protected. Would hope, I would hope not for the sake of that, that guy. <laughs> that, for that particular one, hopefully not. No, yeah, that is not protected by the First Amendment, man. The First Amendment is, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, as long as it's not constituted as a threat and puts someone in fear for their safety, then you can say it. So, I mean, yeah, sit there and say all day. I've even seen people recently talking about uh, if Donald Trump doesn't win the presidency, they're going to start a civil war. They're allowed to say that. It's a conditional statement. They say if blank, then blank, you know, or like, my, uh, well, if he doesn't win it, I'm killing everybody. Well, technically, they're allowed to say that now. Mm -hmm. uh, if he doesn't win, then they might be looked into because now the condition has been met, you know. But as yeah. of right now, it is it so, is um, perfectly so legal for them to say that they're allowed to do it. So I don't know, man. I'm not happy about I get where the people are coming from who convicted her. She clearly is a fucking sociopath, man. She really should not be roaming society. She was fucking 17 with a shit eating grin on her face about the fact that she, had, she yeah. just had convinced someone to kill himself. Well, at the same time, you now live in this age, you know, again, where I said you go on Twitter and you, if you so much as disagree with somebody, they say that's harassment and it's literally violence to disagree, whatever the fuck. Right. And God damn it. If you take it there. The slippery slope and knows no end. You're gonna be slipping down a fucking mountain like Mario. It's a there's a real boy. fine line between that and like fascism or like you know totalitarianism. Whenever you start to put limits on what people can say, it's a really dangerous area to go. You're right. It's a slippery slope that mm. can go from you know trying to protect the average person's interests to like totalitarianism and basically a heartbeat. You know. I don't think it sets a precedent though. Like her case is such a unique and exceptional one because not only did she convince him to carry out the suicide, she basically did kill him. She did it all to get Facebook likes. She wanted yeah. to play the victim. That was her motivation. She wanted to, you know, be the center of attention because her boyfriend had just killed herself. She wanted people mm -hmm. to console her. So it's did a it, really God. unique case. Did it venture into like harassment territory? Like she was constantly my, egging him on, right? It, well, not to my knowledge. I'm pretty sure the issue was that she's she genuinely killed him because he got out of the car. He said he didn't want to do it, but then she just kept telling him, "You need to do it. You're going <laughs> to yeah. do this. You have to do this. I want you to do this." She. I thought killed she was man. talking him up for weeks before that as well. I don't know I don't about know. the lead up. I just remember like over the course of an hour right. or so that he was 
killing himself, he tried to stop multiple times, and she did not let him. Mm-hmm. Well, then, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is a unique really, case, I, but... I don't see the free speech side. Well, the free like, speech I, I side... I don't see it. It's literally... And just yeah, the free just speech side that people are doing, they're just, you know, from their point of view, look, if, if we open up the floodgates for this, then, oh boy, you know, everyone who gets shit online, because uh, I'm sure we've all gotten angry messages like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, look at Dr. Kevorkian. He helped people commit suicide that actually wanted to and went to prison, you know? Like, terminally ill patients. So, I mean, if they're going right. to hold him to that standard, then why not her? Right, but... I mean, Dr. Kevorkian assi- did assisted suicide and he went to prison. So, um, I mean, yeah. if she's sitting there egging a guy on into doing it... Um, it's a very gray it, area, you know? It's really hard for me, obviously, to weigh in on... Look, uh- the what thing I feel is, like should be protected by free speech. Look, the mm-hmm. the thing is, even if she yeah. gets prison time, I just looked it up. It's fifteen months. Fair enough for oh, killing no. someone. <laughs> you know, yeah, that sounds about right. It's not. It's Jesus. not the end of the world. But if only she had done it on RuneScape instead. Yeah, if God, only. That would make me so mad, Josh. When you read <laughs> something like that, where this lady kills her boyfriend to brag about it <laughs> and gets significantly less time, how the fuck do you deal with that? I'd be so upset. Hey, look, man. Uh, well, all I can say about it is it was my path, man. Everything's gone great since then, man. If I wouldn't have gone to prison, I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have a baby on the way. I was a real jaded little mean son of a bitch. To be quite frank, I probably would have overdosed by now the way that I was living my life. You know, I mean, something had to give. And I, it wasn't even until I went back to prison on my violation, man, that I really, really had the middle change that I needed. And I'm just being honest, dude. I got out and relapsed like crazy last time. and I thought I was going to die. I was drinking so much. And I, I know that it sounds it's probably going to sound weak, man. I hope that anybody that has a history with addiction can understand and has some compassion about this, man. But I did not understand 2017, dude. I got out. Everybody's got the fades and and this and everybody's addicted to Instagram. Everybody's cyborgs now. They got all this weird slang where they're lit fam, salty bay all the time. And like, I just, I didn't understand. I didn't fit in. I couldn't relate to people my own age. I couldn't really relate to anybody. I didn't know anybody that had even barely done any jail time. And I just went back to what I knew best, man. I just started drinking a lot, you know, and I didn't confide in anybody like I confide in my wife now and talk to her about stuff like that. Um, it wasn't until I went back again that I really actually really got what I needed, man. And that's crazy for me to say it. But uh, I mean, like, I'm, I'm actually glad at this point that I went, man. I'm glad that I even violated and got sent back again. I'm not going to say that what the prosecutors did was justified. I'm not going to say, oh, I mean, like, I forgive them, dude. But at the same time, there's further action that needs to be taken about this. I'm not done with this. We're not putting it down yet. The, fed, the, the, the feds broke the law. I can say that. Can't go into mm-hmm. a ton of detail, man. They broke the law in my case multiple, multiple times. And um, the, the, the lawyers that I've spoken to want a lot of money. I don't care about the money. I'm not concerned about that. I mean, they, they want me to get millions of dollars from this. Obviously, they want to cut. I don't even care about that, dude. I want this felony conviction off of my record. And I want, you know, if, if somebody would tell me I'm sorry – it'd go a long way with me. But for me personally, man, the, the last year that I did in prison when I went back on violation, man, is whenever I said, okay, it's time to get my shit together, man. I'm about to marry this girl. I'm about to be faithful. I'm about to be sober. I've been sober for like 13 months as of three days ago. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Tom- I don't know how. I, I must be high. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, tomorrow will be 13 <laughs> months for me. And um, man, you know, it was my path. Now, hopefully somebody like that can get her shit together in one go. But, I mean, it sounds like she's got some serious emotional deficiencies, possibly to the point of sociopathy, like Kaya said. Um, that's dangerous. That's a lot more dangerous than me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think no, I would say so. Yes. But I brush it off, man. I brush it off. Everybody's case is different. There can't be really, you know, just like a, a standard template for this. If they did, then the system would be broken worse than it already is. If there was just a template, you say this, this happens, you know? Um they, compassion and human and uh, humanity factors have to be included and weighed and considered. Now, if it was me with my history, I'd have weighed what she said a lot heavier. She'd probably be getting the high end of the guideline range, man. I mean, like uh, anybody that knows about mental health and shit like that knows somebody can be pushed over the edge when they're in that state. And she manipulated that to her advantage. Um, in regard to her getting a lot less prison time than me, man, I hope that she has uh, as much introspection as I did. I doubt she will. Sorry to say, but I hope she does. She doesn't seem like the kind that would. Uh, yeah. yeah that's just something screaming. about her. I highly yeah, doubt when it. I saw that smirk. I was like, uh, yeah, she ain't sorry. She's she's in here smirking like I did the first time I went to court when I was 21. I went in there smirking. Didn't do me much good, I promise. <laughs> 17 is young, but not that young. You said, okay, kind of like badass. You want to be in here? You, we'll yeah. show you where the badasses go. You want to come in here acting like you're bad? I'll show you where the bad people go. I don't know. I, I think I she's like. Uh, let's see. This was in 2014, so six years. She's, she'd be like 20, what, three now, roughly? 
Yeah, roughly. 23. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's difficult to imagine that she suddenly grew conscious. Really you know how they always say that, Sorry. you know, if a young child is torturing small animals or something, that can be an indicator that they just are psychopaths. Yeah. I don't necessarily think so. I think, you know, if you're being a good person is as much nurture as it is nature. You can take a four year old psycho and I'm sure make a genuine effort for him to grow up to be a really good person. But when you're 17, that's not that young anymore, man. At 17, a lot of us, we knew kind of a- that killing someone is a bad thing. If you don't know that yeah, somehow absolutely. and you still you smirk about it like a fucking shit eating bitch. Very suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. That's the point where there, I mean, there's no questions asked about it. There's no gray areas anymore. You know, right from wrong, you know, and mm-hmm. um, my mom actually her thesis paper in college and uh, was uh, on the childhood commonalities of serial killers and nature versus nurture. And it seems to be a pretty good blend of both. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you can, like you said, you could take somebody that's probably like clinically a psychopath or sociopath and raise them to be upstanding individuals. Um, simultaneously, you can raise somebody the best that you can. They can come out the opposite end of the spectrum, you know I mean? But that girl right there, man. I don't like to judge people, but she doesn't judge them by her face. And they probably said this about me. She probably didn't learn her lesson. Probably doesn't intend to learn a lesson. Probably vehemently protesting her innocence, which is just wild to me. Especially considering that I went down for such a significant period of time for a stupid prank. You know, I got locked up with these maniacs in there. (laughs) No offense to the guys that I was locked up with, man. But there were some crazy sons of bitches that I was in there serving time with. I mean, murderers, you name it. Child (laughs) molesters at the other prisons that I went to, bro. I mean, like full-fledged. Life sentence, hardened convicts, been in prison seven they, times. Do wow. they really treat child molesters badly in prison? Because everyone always says that, but it, it sounds like this uh, this lie we almost tell ourselves to make ourselves feel better, that, they, that they're that they getting their comeuppance. No, at the first prison that I went to, uh, when they found out that somebody had a sex crime, uh, basically any sort, they'd get the boots put on them. Um, people looking to join a particular gang, uh, the white gangs have to go on a mission to earn their tattoos. And uh, that typically involves doing, if not mortal, then certainly disfiguring amounts of damage to somebody with a sex crime or that told on somebody on their case. Um, I was later shipped to two different, oh, well, I went to a different prison uh, where it was kind of a yard that was regarded as safe for them because there were more of them than there were regular inmates because I went uh, transferred to do a uh, drug abuse program. Mm-hmm. And um, they were good there. They were running that bitch. You know what I mean? They, they, nobody <laughs> messed with them. There were more of them than there were anybody else. And, uh, I'm not what? even kidding you, dude. At that, at that prison, the, the Chomos, as we call them, that's the prison slang for it, Chomos, they mm-hmm. like had a car just like a gang would. Like They, they treated it really, really seriously because they had to stick together for protection. And then when I went to the low security on my violation, that was my first time ever going to a low security, which I hated with a passion. Um, <laughs> there was a uh, ton of them there too i mean a fucking gang of them so i mean not every prison no the first one that i went to was was pretty rocking and rolling um but no not every single prison it's not like just because they're a child molester or whatever and they go to prison it doesn't necessarily mean that they're just going to get clapped you know as soon as they get there but uh, at the first prison i went to they get off the bus they start questioning you and to be quite frank man after you've been in prison for two three years you can spot them a mile away there really ain't no hiding it at that point. They have a vibe about them, man. I'm telling you, they have this aura around them. And <laughs> I can say that, like, not all, like, sick bastards look like they are, but all the ones that look like it are. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, like, not every dude that, that touched a little kid looks like he touched a little kid, but the ones that look like they touched little kids did. Period. <laughs> you, you don't make any mistakes about it. And so then they, you know, it's a pretty simple uh, little progr- program. They call their, the gang leaders call their wife or whatever, and they use some kind of code to give the guys a uh, federal inmate number to their wife. And the wife comes back and says, no, go. Boots on his head. Mm. He better hope that he gets to, uh, he's already awake and standing up whenever the door unlocks in the morning because somebody's about to run up in a cell and get their patch from him. Luckily, nice. I was not involved Damn. in any gangs. I like that. Yeah, I try to have compassion for people, man, but those dudes are straight evil. And, um, nah, not for them. Uh, nobody tries to break that up. When somebody goes five to one on some, uh, on some diddler, uh, everybody's pretty much just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like CO's, my kind of prison. Yeah, the COs will be over there walking slow as shit. The COs are over there like, inmate, stop resisting. Just like chilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, no. Ground. Get off of inmate... Get off the inmate pedophile over here. Please step back or I will mace you. They don't mace shit. They sit there and after about 45 seconds, they're like, all right, bro, enough, enough. <laughs> <laughs> if it's two regular inmates fighting, they're going to run over there and tackle them and mace the shit out of them and fucking call in the hit the deuces, which is where they set off the alarm and all the every CO and every employee has to come running. They're going to do that immediately. But 
I know Tachamo, they're like walking over there, like, wait, what cell did y'all say he's in? <laughs> I hear it. Uh, Do I have oh, time wait. for some coffee? He's on the second floor? <laughs> well, I better get my key. I don't think I have my key for that floor. Hang on. <laughs> right. Hold on, nah, I gotta finish grinding in RuneScape real quick. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna go log out of the nightmare zone. Give me just a second here. All right, inmate, <laughs> stop resisting. I don't care if you resist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw one time where they, they went to go pull some dudes off of a child molester was getting his head stomped on, man. And the funny thing was, you know, that they, they can do whatever they want, man. They rough us up pretty good a lot of times. If you get in trouble, they're grabbing you by the neck and stuff like that, you know, uh, when they're obviously not allowed to do that. This dude's on the ground, curled up in the fetal position, getting the shit stomped out of him by two Aryans. And they, they walk over there. They, they didn't hit the deuces. They didn't call for backup. They walk over there get the guy off of him, and then they snatch up the chomo and start rough handling him. <laughs> they started jerking him around by the collar and stuff like that. And you son of a bitch! And, you know, kicking the back of his heels when he's trying to walk and stuff like that. He's stumbling and falling down on his knees. I shouldn't laugh about it, man, but it's pretty funny. They don't like him either, you know? Nobody <laughs> likes a child boy. <laughs> no, dude, they have no friends in there. But at the same time, at the, at the, at the low security prison and the second prison I went to, man, I mean, like, they, they're running shit. Somebody gets in a fight with a child molester, you're about to get jumped on by 50 of them, you know? It smells like, like Jolly Ranchers and, and Van Keys. Fuck. They, they're about to come mobbing deep. There's going to be this walrus-looking guy that was over there, and you're like, oh, my God, dude. They're so obvious, too, man. Once you know what to look for, you can spot them. I spot them in public all the time. I'm not saying they've acted yet. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I can see it in his eyes, man. He's got that look. She's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, I'm telling you right now, I'm not saying he does it, but I'm saying he would go. If he had the opportunity, <laughs> we should. he would do it. You have a pedo you know, like dog. Ex- yeah, the Professor Xavier <laughs> identifying pedophiles. <laughs> Let's put you well, in a I mean, cerebro. Hey, that- have you detect all the pedophiles <laughs> yeah. on the planets? I bet they're all I in goddamn it. Discord headquarters, too. Oh, man, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> that seems to be the hive in 2020, I found. No, I'm just playing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you can you can spot them, and it's not necessarily even that they would just like touch a kid necessarily, but I can tell by uh, most of the time I can look at certain people and be like, okay, look, if this 15 year old girl was ready and waiting on this 45 year old man, he'd do it. I can tell, tell by looking at. It. I'm not gonna say that he's gonna go out of his way to do it, but he would go. And I mean, the ones Honey, that would it's go, time would to leave. Snap. I could smell them. <laughs> They're here. Yeah, <laughs> y'all, y'all got some kids around here. I was actually at the, at the low security prison that I went to. Jared Fogel's uh, co-defendant was there. Oh. And, uh, oh. No, not himself. Not himself. Sorry. Uh, his... <laughs> he could have gotten an autograph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I love your sandwiches. He's getting his shit stomped in. <laughs> you know what I would have told him? I said, Mr. Fogel, please, can you sign this with your blood? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I got you. Um, I would have walked up to him and said, yeah, you know, you used to have a mild cholesterol problem. Now you got a child molesterol problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's an interesting question. Then, so... I imagine some of the prisons you went to had some like, as you mentioned, higher profile criminals. Is there any like really rich ones? Do they, does the whole community interact? Because Jared Fogle, he's like the ultimate pedophile. And if they're getting roughed well, up like you say they are, is he just getting his shit kicked in? You're forgetting uh, about I Epstein. They probably sent him to a prison where they know. Um, well, living pedophile, I suppose. Right, right, right. Yeah, he would have been fucked up. Well, I mean, like, it depends on the prison. A lot of times if they send them, like, to that first one that I went to, they'll go straight to protective custody as soon as they get off the bus. They, they, okay, they so step to the side, like and they got to go spend the next two, three years sitting in a one-man cell or with a cellmate by themselves that better not find out why they're there. Um, but if they, they, they almost certainly send him to a prison where he would be okay. I mean, they typically... I won't say typically. They normally don't send them places where they're going to get fucked up because it's just more work for them, really, in the end. Um, mm-hmm. But if it's particularly heinous, they'll stick them right where they know they don't need to go. And then every single one thinks, oh, I can explain it because they all have a story. Every person that's a sex offender and they don't care what it is, bro. They don't care if it's you raped a a 45 year old woman and it was an accident or it was consensual or whatever. If you have a sex crime, you're getting your head stomped and it doesn't matter if it was a child. Um, They they don't fuck with sex offenders and snitches. And um, they typically will send them to a place where they'll be okay. Like that last prison that I went to, man, that, you know, they'll ship them there something where they're going to be all right. Um. And they mob up and they play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, which really bummed me out because I was like, man, I wish I could find a bunch of dudes that weren't Chomos to play D&D with. That'd be a great game. Here, I can't fucking play it. I can't with like, every time he sees some guys with some game dice, he's got a walrus mustache and beady little eyes and thinning on top and a 70s stash. And you're like, oh, no, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> I knew it. want to play some D&D? Hey guys, I just uh, I just leveled up my paladin. Let's go over. Oh God, get away from me! And I'm young looking, bro. I'm not fucking around with those guys. 
<laughs> That's unlucky, man. Just wanted to play some D and D in peace. Yeah, I know, man. I couldn't find any non pedophile, and then it's got a stigma too. Like, there's plenty of guys that are like, "Hell yeah, I'd play some D and D," but damn it, they're gonna think we're chomos. So, nope. <laughs> <laughs> You sit down Fun. and bust out the graph paper. Everybody's like, "Oh shit, he's a sex offender." <laughs> you know, even supposed to talk to him in there. If you, if you even talk to him or interact with him in any way, they say you're as bad as, like, you're a sympathizer. Yeah. Is what they call it. It's kind of like how if you learn a few words of Spanish, you're suddenly a race traitor to white guys. It's like it's real black and white. You know what I mean? It's like you pick your side early. And I I advise that nobody that goes picks the Chomo team. You're not gonna win. Unless, unless you're at Forest City, Arkansas, low security. If you're at Forest City, Arkansas, low security, Federal Correctional Institute, ride with the Chomos because they're deep. <laughs> they got the numbers in that bitch. They're running it. They got the numbers in there. They're fucking two-thirds of the compound and done some horrific shit that's the subject of a documentary somewhere, you know. Um, but, yeah, as far as the rich guys go, man, uh, I was actually locked up. A lot of them, a lot of the guys that were real, real, real ball and have been down for 20, 25 years already that I met when I was at the uh, Talladega, the medium-high security – but uh, like I mentioned earlier, I was actually locked up with Clarence Heatley, the black hand of death, man. He had the whole New York police department bought off in the late 80s and was like bringing dope in the harbor. There's a lot of documentaries about him. Uh, real, real funny dude. He's gotten a dark sense of humor. I really shouldn't throw him out like this, but uh, his sense of humor is so dark, dude. We were coming back from visit one day and uh, he had been in there with his daughter and her girlfriend because his daughter was a lesbian. And uh, obviously he's been locked up since his daughter was like two or three we we're walking back i was like they call him Bilal now he's a muslim i was like hey Bilal, man you have a good visit he was like yeah man my, my daughter comes in there and she's got apparently a fucking girlfriend i'm like honey honey i don't care that you're a lesbian that doesn't bother me at all but daddy's been locked up for a long long time let's see some kissing sweetheart i was like oh my god jesus Bilal, Christ. you gotta be kidding me bro but like the other guys that make jokes for that kind of shit are the ones that get beat up in there you know what i'm saying but yeah, boy, really. when you're the black hand of death with that kind of reputation, yeah. you probably get away <laughs> with that, Bobby I imagine. Brown. He kidnapped Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston paid the ransom money straight into his hand. Like, this dude was linked to, like, 13 murders. He's serving life plus 255 years. <laughs> I mean, uh, he was a cold-blooded dude. Now he just sits around and sings the blues and cleans the floor and drinks a little bit of prison wine. You know what I mean? He's, he still has that little grain of hope, man. That is an overwhelming force. The force of hope is by far the most powerful force on the face of the earth, I guess, because these dudes that are doing never going to get out, have this tiny little itty bitty grain of sand, hope somewhere deep inside of their heart that something's going to happen. They're going to get out one day and that keeps them alive. Every single day they get up in that bitch. They've been doing this since before I was born. They get up, they clean their cell, they do their push ups or whatever. If they do that, or they go outside for a walk, walk to track, listen to some music. They do it every single day, bro. And they're going to do it every day for the rest of their lives. But something inside of them tells them I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to die behind this razor wire. And that's enough to keep them going, man. It's insane to me. And I, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Don't get me wrong. When I say it's insane, I'm not saying they're delusional. That's what they got to do to cope, you know? Yeah, that's sad, though. Fuck. Yeah, it is, man. Jesus. I mean, it, it, don't get me well, wrong. I mean, I, I this dude killed like 13 people. Yeah, I was about to say, hands. I guess it's not sad considering who it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I had a friend in there. that was, He was a store man. And um, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, a store man is somebody that keeps a lot of commissary in their cell. You can go and borrow something from him for 50 cents back on a dollar, basically two for three. So if I go get two honey buns from him the next time I go to store, I owe him three. It's how a lot of the dudes that have been locked up a long time keep their money going, you know? And um, he actually had only done eight months in prison before he got a life sentence because of the third strike federal law. He, uh, like got caught selling crack or something in like 1985, pled out for probation. Uh, he got caught with some weed while he was on probation, caught another felony and, uh, did eight months in a state prison. Then got released on parole. And then he got caught with uh, a gun and some weed, which is a automatic mandatory minimum in 10 years, unless you've already got two felonies. That was his third felony, drugs and guns, automatic life sentence. He's been locked up since like 1994 or something like that. 91 actually. Oh, me. He's a cool guy. There's tons of them in there, man. Oh, man, I was friends with a guy that's pretty famous. Uh, you can't find him on the internet, but he's famous in the feds. His name was Big Horse, bro. This dude was Native American in 1984. He had just bought the brand-new Van Halen album, 1984, you know? Lived on an Indian reservation. All Native American reservations are automatically federal property. If you do any crime there, including a DUI, it's federal, not state, you know? It's federal property. Uh, this dude's in a field drinking whiskey with his homies, which is illegal on, on reservations. And you're about to find out why. And some car pulls up into the same field as him while he's drinking. And they were talking shit. Cause they're like something about some tribal shit. You know what I mean? This dude. So these five dudes start walking towards big horse. This dude was 17 years old. They start walking towards him. Uh, he reached into his car where he was blaring 1984 by Van Halen. He never got to finish that album. He just bought the cassette tape and was playing it in his car and, um, uh, reached right past his pistol that he had. And grabbed a fucking tomahawk. 
Because he's just oh a straight up tribal weapon in there, dude. So these dudes come mobbing up on him, and he pulls out this tomahawk, and all five of them were like, you won't do shit. First dude gets close to him, he buried it in him. So the, obviously the, the other four turn around and take off running. He yanked that thing out of that guy and chucked it, caught another guy in the head and got two manslaughter charges, man. He said he sat down in that chair, picked up his bottle of whiskey and just kept drinking right next to these dudes' bodies because he was like, I, manslaughter? I just fucked up my whole life, man. Yeah, they not, actually yeah, could, not he threw the uh, axe in a river that he was sitting next to. So they didn't have the murder weapon. Uh, they weren't really going to be able to prove second degree or third degree murder. Uh, I guess it would have been second in this case without the weapon. So he pled out to... Um, two counts of manslaughter but this is the thing dude this dude was kind of mentally handicapped um <laughs> I, I just i love the technicality 85. that they couldn't prove where the axe wounds came from must have been manslaughter <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly they couldn't get that they couldn't uh, find could the weapon anything. so therefore we're not sure that an axe put it these just axe happens these guys heads spontaneously yeah, must have been a sure. hawk attack been a badger <laughs> yeah these these native american reservations get wild at this life out here but um he uh so he pled out, right? He got sentenced. The, the Fed sentenced in months. So he got sentenced to, uh, what would it have been? Uh, I guess it was 600 months. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, it was 600 months, 50 years. Yeah, he got sentenced to 600 months. This dude's a little slow, bro. He, could, he can't even read. And he had been in here since he was 17. And he, was, this, he got locked up in 84. I met him in 2014. Uh, he'd already been down for 30 years. And um, huh. so... He got sentenced. He goes to one of the most rocking and rolling penitentiaries in America at the time, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, high security in 1984, when there were just bodies going out like every three weeks. Uh, they, they're all sitting around watching TV. He pulls out his paperwork. They're like, how long are you serving, big horse? He's like, I got about three more years left. They pull out his paperwork and they look at it. They go, dude, you got 600 months. And he goes, nah, I got 600 weeks. They go, bro, you got sentenced in months. This is the feds. You're doing fucking 50 years, dude. And he actually like fell out and passed out and they had to take him to medical. He didn't, realize, he didn't even understand how much time he has. And I would also like to point out that he is out now and he's actually quite wealthy. His whole family died while he's in prison. He got left a ton of inheritance. I saw his bank statement one time because I fucked with him pretty tough for a little while. He's a cool guy, uh, even though he's kind of slow. And um, yeah, he had about 3.4, 3.5 million in the bank from his family dying. And uh, but man, even though he was slow and people clowned on him and stuff like that, man, he had survived through some of the most violent prisons in America, through some of the most violent eras in America. And this dude used to go out every single night that we were allowed out if it wasn't raining or sprinkling or whatever, man, and watch the sun go down. Like, every day. He was kind of simple, man. He'd go sit on the bleachers and watch the sunset. And we'd be like, what up, horse? He came outside. What are you doing, man? He'd be like, I just came out to watch the sunset again. Just every single day, man, he'd go out there and sit down. He was waiting to get out, bro. And this dude had scars all over his body. Like, I can only imagine the shit this dude saw, you know? I fucked with him pretty tough. And he told me, like, three stories that just made my skin crawl about riots and shit he was in, man. I mean... It's, it's kind of a major untold story, dude. You know, the, the, these guys, man, that go in there with all this insane amount of time, especially for things that are relatively minor. I'm not saying Big Horse because he fucking straight up murdered two guys. Manslaughter. A lot of guys, man. Yeah, technically, yeah, you're right. He didn't murder them. He manslaughtered them. First three manslaughtered. Um, which is like an accidental death by law. So good job. Good game. Good game, Big Horse. You won. And, um, man, the things that these dudes go through, and especially for the minor things that they did, you know, man, it's really just like a story in and of itself. Plus the, the for-profit prison association. Uh, I'd like to hit you with a fun fact real quick. Approximately, now this may have changed in the past two years since I read this, but at the time that I read it, approximately, give or take a little bit for deviation from normalcy, 3% of the entire Earth's population was American at the time that I read this statistic. 3%. You know, got 100 people on the whole planet Earth. Three of them are American. 25% of the Earth's prisoners are American and in America. That's just not – that doesn't add mm. up, dude. There's there's a serious problem here. There's a, uh, And it's really, really covered up. I thought that only bad people go to prison at the time of my arrest. I had to learn differently, you know? They really ramped that there up with the war on drugs, drugs and such, for, right? Yeah, exactly. A lot of it's the war on drugs, which is a total failure. There was a guy in there that uh, I never met him personally, but we heard about him a lot. He pissed on a on – a, uh, post office while he was drunk and got a year in the feds federal crime because it was a post office a buddy of mine's a registered sex offender for urinating outside of a bar i think it was he was drunk and he urinated in public outside of a bar by like like an alley oh my now he's God, a registered dude. sex offender for indecent exposure in public or something like that yeah, something along those oh lines. Oh my god, bro, that's what a I'm talking cop about. Cop scooted man. in sideways after he had urinated, so the cop actually didn't see him pissing. But so it's it was okay. Fucked His up. word counts. It was real yeah, fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked up. I mean, yeah, I'm okay with story a couple years ago. You know, I don't like people who just piss in public, 
but you know just have like a you know this town's dickheads list right just put his name on there and then scrub it after a month just publicly shame him a teeny tiny bit but not a permanent record as a fucking rapist or whatever it is and then you know you hear these stories of judges who get caught taking bribes from prison companies to meet a quota There was a story just, I think, two years ago where some guy just, he was getting paid millions of dollars to send black teenagers to prison because they just needed to keep it's it a full. Huge, a huge industry. Oh, the system's very racist, by the way. Anybody that denies that might be racist themselves, man. If you look at the statistics, it is very, very much tilted against blacks and poor people. Also, there's a huge well, I don't think it's like a secret. It's, the, the whole system's fucked, man. Yeah, yeah from, it's from the ground really up. Fucked. I can't believe that this is something that I actually know about and feel passionate about now. I never thought my life would take this turn, you know what I mean? But having been a victim of yeah. it now, man, I'm just like, it's crazy that I see it and so many people don't. It's so underground, I guess, man. It's just weird that we apparently are unable as a species to find the middle ground. You look at the Middle East where, you know, if we have yep. journalists, they're usually in prison. Or you have people in America where if, if you smoke weed or you get caught with half a gram of it on you, depending on the judge, you get life in prison. And then on the other yep. hand, you have shit like that um, Anders Breivik, that motherfucker who yeah. killed 77 people. And now he's just yucking it up in a cell where he has a TV. A comfortable where hotel like uh, place where he, where he went on a hunger strike for new video games. Yeah, <laughs> where he can play soccer. Yeah, he went on a hunger strike to get new video games. Like, uh, isn't there some middle ground? Like, can't that guy be locked into a cell forever for, until the rest of his right. life instead of living in comfort? Just shoot him, shoot him in the back of the head. Death penalty. Yeah, man, that, that, that's kind of why America instituted the sentencing guidelines, you know, was to kind of try and bring some normalcy to it. And then you get cases like mine, they don't have to follow the guidelines. They're recommended. I could have got 10 years. He went dead in between. The maximum by the stat, by statutory was 10 years. The maximum recommended was two. He went right in between. He gave me four years under the statutory max, four years over the recommended max. Just put it dead in the middle. Tripled my sentence, you know. Um, that definitely uh, took the shit-eating grin off of my face, I can tell you that much. As soon as he said... I do believe that it's appropriate in this case for me to go outside of the guideline range. I was like, oh, that backfired. <laughs> I <laughs> thought I was in here making a point, And really all I did was piss this guy off and he has my life in his hands. And he was like, we're going to give you 72 months. And I was like, 72. That's like 10 years. Not, I mean, not really, but I mean, for, for me being 21, you know what I'm saying? He mm. said six years. I couldn't even fathom. I got on the elevator and I was in shock, man. I turned around and I also have to say, man, this is a beautiful thing to me. A lot of my town... Uh, turned up at the courthouse for my sentencing, man. The principal from my middle school was in the second row back of 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 the supporters. And as soon as I walked in, he gave me a huge wave and a thumbs up, you know. I was like, lawyer, hey, man, can you call attention to this? We got school officials here to support me, man. This dude just waved at me and smiled at me like, bro, I'm not the person they're making me out to be, man. I got on the elevator and this marshal was like, well, you know, man, uh, the guy right before you got, got 30 years. So, I mean... At least you ain't got 30 years, you know? I'm like, bro, bro, don't talk to me. I'm going to prison for, like, basically the rest of my life, man. Don't fucking talk to me for this stupid prank. That dude probably diddled somebody or something, and you're over here telling me, like, hey, it ain't that bad, buddy. As a matter of fact, that's not quite a perfect impersonation of this marshal because the guy that I'm talking about had a really severe lateral lisp, like murder face from Death Clock. And <laughs> it was funny because all the – I live in the South – Every time that the marshals have a minute to shoot the shit, they start whispering about hunting. And, like, <laughs> this dude would be sitting over here whispering, right? But he had a lateral list. So the courtroom's all tense and silent. We're waiting on the judge to come in. And all you hear is this guy over here going, <laughs> he, he couldn't hide his lateral list. Like, you couldn't hear his words, but you could hear his list. And so, like, <laughs> well, I'm in there trying not to crack up because I'm still an asshole at this point, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and of course, another marshal walks in to like relieve him or whatever. And the guy's like, hey, man, I kill anything this weekend. He's like, yeah, I killed a whole bunch of time. <laughs> He's like got this terrible lateral list. And, uh, I was like, these guys are in charge of my life. This man is in charge of me. This guy decides whether or not I get tased or maced or what. And he's four foot tall, redhead, looks like a leprechaun. And he's got a severe lateral lisp. Like, I didn't even know that you can't hide a lateral lisp. I, I surely thought that the, the forces of the universe that be would at least give those guys the good grace to be able to whisper. But no, it turns out that the lateral lisp cannot be whispered. So all I hear is the spit slurping through this motherfucker's chipmunk cheeks while he's talking about what he killed this weekend. And I'm up here on the fucking frying pan, you know? <laughs> that sucks. That's probably why he's not a good hunter, man. He can't be stealthy. Yeah, Fuck. exactly. Poor he tries guy. to whisper on a phone call and every deer in a 50 mile radius hears. <laughs> like, oh, is that a fucking chipmunk? What the hell is that? Let's get away from this thing. We're going to get shot. Fuck, man. Hey, Fuck him. Hey, man. Uh, what, the main Listen, thing Josh. I took away from it, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
we got to wrap up soon. So tell us what yeah, you yeah. learned. Yeah, man. The, the main thing I took away from it, man, for one thing, be accountable for your shit, dude. We all make mistakes. The harder that you rage against it, man, the more that they're going to they're gonna rally against you. And, you know, if, if you get caught in the claws, you did something at least a little bit wrong. Take a harder look at yourself, man. I'm hoping to God that nobody ever ends up in a situation like mine, dude. Seriously. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it totally went beyond anything I ever could have imagined. It became a media thing, and then all of a sudden they were really hell-bent against me, man. Hypothetically, if anybody has to do any time or you find yourself in a situation, man, there was a book that was in Autobiography of Malcolm X that I really appreciated, and it changed the way that I looked at my time. Turn your cell into your school and your monastery. doesn't matter. That doesn't mean you have to be Muslim, atheist, Christian, whatever, man. Get right spiritually, internally. Use your use the time to educate yourself, not even necessarily for activism, man. I read like 900 books in there, man. I'm not bitter about it. I'm not upset about it. I finally got to meet the official podcast. I met Count Dankula. I met <laughs> it Silent was all Core. worth it. It was all worth it, man. I'm chilling with Moist Critical. I'm chilling with Kyle. We got Andrew <laughs> in the chat, man. We got everybody over here. I mean, like, we, we, we got the whole squad, guys. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're here with J-A-C-K. We got Jax, Andrew, Charlie, Kyle. It was worth it. Um... My mother-in-law uses that kitty litter. I just wanted to point that out real quick. I meant to say that like two hours ago. Um, guys, okay. life gets better, man. Life Thanks, sucks man. ass sometimes. If, if it didn't, then what would be the point? You know what I mean, man? It, it makes you who you are. Every single thing can be a learning experience in life if you're open to it and willing to let it be an experience. I'm not writing a book. I'm not a motivational speaker, man. This is just something I picked up on. Show a little humility, man. Take a look at yourself. Be kinder to people. Don't be getting so triggered that you take them straight to the hoop. <laughs> you know, yeah. it can backfire Don't on sue you people in a quick heartbeat. I'd yeah. also like to personally thank bags. the official podcast for not hitting me with the chicken choking question. Cause I was absolutely positive that that one was coming. I figured that you guys were going to be like, so what's the weirdest chicken choking story that you have? But, um, seriously guys, I, uh, I really appreciate y'all letting me on the show, man. This has been an absolute blast. I hope that we can do something again in the future. Um, yeah. if you follow me back on Twitter, Charlie, you're going to see a hell of a lot of ads and <laughs> attempted messages and stuff. Cause I've been trying to get in touch with you or Kai for a minute now. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I saw you in the stream one time, but it was during an intense league game. So I had to keep taking my focus Dude, off. Don't worry Josh. about it. I was not mad at anybody. I know you guys are hard to get a hold of. Yeah. Where can people find your stuff? Okay. Well, my YouTube is Josh Palalt. The last name spelling is P-I-L-L-A-U-L-T. I've got some links I can possibly copy paste you guys if you want, you know, but my, my YouTube is my mm-hmm. main thing. I'm not getting a ton, of, a ton of traffic right now, man, but I have a strong community that I do have. I got about 23,000 subscribers at this point. I'm really happy about it, man. It means the world to me. Uh, I spent years in there thinking the whole world forgot about me, basically, and to get out to all the support, man. It's been bonkers. Um, I also have an Instagram. My Twitch is J Palalt. Uh, same last name spelling, but without the Osh. And um, that, that's where I've been doing a lot of my stuff here lately. I've been Twitch streaming a good bit. Uh, the day that this goes live, I'll probably hop on Twitch just to, you know, whoop, whoop, boost it up a little bit. Live stream um, your next arrest. Instagram, Josh Blalt. Twitter, Josh Blalt. <laughs> Do what? Yeah, yeah, the subject of my nest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're making threats on Twitch. We get in there, and he didn't understand downloading. He's really going to be befuddled by Twitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, thank you for the follow. Hugbeast TV. Scream Labs, thank what, you. what uh, hey, lab? You're yeah, making you meth now? Yeah, exactly. What the fuck is this? I took it easy on you, Josh, and this is how you repay me? (laughs) He said he had a whole stream of meth in his labs. A whole stream (laughs) of it. We're talking rivers, football stadiums full of methamphetamine ass, all right? (laughs) The guy went right back to his old habits. Like, I never even cooked meth to begin with. Don't let the prosecutors get a hold to it. Seriously, man, though, it's been a blast, you guys. I really appreciate you guys letting me on. Yeah, um, man, this was great. I really hope that we can do something in the future, even if we don't do another podcast or whatever. Um, at this point, I recently started making memes I missed in prison videos, which aren't exactly super <laughs> popular, but I've been catching up on the dab and the whip nene. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I don't know what the, the fuck capsule. you guys were doing out here between 2013 and 2017, but y'all had some weird ass memes. Um, yeah, you're going to be real disappointed once you check start it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, been a great um, journey. I, I kind of just pretty much do sort of what you do, Charlie, whenever you do your videos. You know, I pretty much pull it up and I just roast it the whole time because we got a similar sense of humor and I just love making fun of people. And um, that's the way to do it, man. I, I still talk a lot of shit. I just don't, you know, involve schools. And my, uh, it's probably the safest <laughs> bet. I, yeah. I, I, I wager it's probably the, the way to play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I keep it a little bit more PG now. Don't get me wrong now. I'll still type KYS in a heartbeat on RuneScape if somebody's crashing my world or whatever. Also, um, a friend of mine asked me to specifically request that you start streaming RuneScape because we all know you played it, Charlie. Yeah. So, uh, I used to stream it. I'm taking a, taking a break. Taking a break? Old school, right? So taking a, you know, yeah, I a think little hiatus off old school. 
the KYS thing is the last bastion of our freedoms, I think. We can never let that yeah, fight we're gonna go. Yeah, we have to keep it at that. Yeah. Better now, when I say I type KYS, I don't mean I don't type the whole thing out now. I use an acronym. I can interpret that anyway. I can be like, no, man, I'm at um, Kaya Yeet. <laughs> Fuck! Stop! Oh, that's I, super I, meme. I don't, I don't He's remember. The, boys. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know what to use for the S there, but I just learned about Yeet, and it's pretty funny to me still. So, um, <laughs> Kaya Yeet's socks? No, I have no idea. Kaya Yeet's super kitty litter. The uh, Ooh, the, yeah. the, the pretty litter. Pretty litter. Yeah, hey, look, yeah. We're, we're working on it, guys. I'm not even we're kidding you, man. It's crazy that you use that ad because we actually have that in this house, and that shit is fire. And I'm not even I'm not getting paid for any kind of an advertisement. We're not involved in this advertisement. That shit is actually really good. So um, I All appreciate right. it, guys, man. It's been a lot of fun. I'm glad this finally happened. Kaya, yeah. thank you for reaching out to me like the first time that I was out, man. And he messaged me on Discord a lot, commented on my video, and randomly said, do you want to go on the official podcast, which gave me two heart attacks at the same time. Um, <laughs> it's been an absolute blast, man. I'm a big fan of all of you guys. I love watching yeah, these man. things, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. I hope that it helps my channel out a little bit. Um, I recently <laughs> – I went full on ice beside and made a little money here recently from YouTube and Twitch and resigned from my job. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a bold move. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bold. I, I think I have a little part time thing working on the Internet uh, coming in here soon. But uh, well, I, good, I needed man. more commitment to Twitch and YouTube and try to get some videos and some content out, you know, but I do have a channel. I've been making I did an episode of prison cooking where I made a hot pocket prison style, um, <laughs> which is just ramen and chips. And also me <laughs> reacting to the god awful memes that you guys decided to make popular out here. And I'm going to specifically blame hey, the it's not podcast, our fault. You guys are really popular. Yeah, we, we don't, we do don't need it. Uh, I don't know, man. It's you guys hold a lot of zone. sway out here. I mean, you probably could have snuffed it if you wanted to, man. But you guys no, just let this no. ride. No, no. Hey man, we've been fighting in, the same guys. fights as you in prison. We we weekly we bash on furries, pedophiles, memes, yeah. Reddit. We fight the <laughs> same battle. Walmart, lady. <laughs> yeah, we're we're on the same team in that regard. All right, yeah. fight the memes. All right, good. Memes, All right, in that case, I can continue to work with you guys. I'll bless you guys again. No, I'm just kidding, man. For real. Hey, Amen. Let's man. wrap yeah, this. Really great appreciate day, it, Josh Jackson. Right. Everybody, follow me back on yeah, Twitter. See ya, at Josh Blaw. And by that, I mean the official podcast. Follow me back on Twitter. Woo. Amen. <laughs> I already did. All right, excellent. Thanks, oh, thanks everyone. We'll see you next week. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.